I've got a worm in my brain. It brings me to my knees. It comes on like a thought, but it stays just like a disease. And if you Um, Preston. Hello, David. David in Preston, hey, Nick. David in Preston. How you doing? Good, thanks. You're a funny guy, you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure whether you meant that in a good way or not. I'll give you one benefit of Brexit, just one, if you want it. Mm-hmm. We've closed the democratic deficit. Hey. We're no longer run by unelected EU commissioners in the Politburo of Brussels. Wow, did, did you read that on Facebook? No. We are actually run by unelected officials in the House of Lords. They get to stay there forever, regardless of um, their quality as human being or their knowledge of what it is. They don't make laws, that they just advise. No, David, they don't advise. They make laws. And no, they don't make laws. Yes, Sorry, they do. you're wrong. No, I'm not wrong. Yes, you are wrong. And I'm definitely not wrong. And they are overseen by an unelected head of state. So this idea that the European Union is uh, full of unelected bureaucrats is ridiculous when you turn the mirror onto ourselves and you see that we are the ones that are run by unelected officials. Anyway, can I get on to the point I rang up about? I thought that was the point you rang up about. No, it wasn't. You... you... Your uh, little diatribe before, whilst I was waiting, uh, deflected me. Oh, you've been deflected? Yeah. That's what I thought the moment you started to call. I thought, this caller is defective. Yeah, because you're a funny guy like a clown. Yeah, like I make you laugh. I'm here to amuse you. Yeah, yeah. You're a clown, Nick. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. How does it feel to be a clown on national radio? Um, feels great. It feels good. like uh, it feels like an excellent way to make a living. Very good. Well, I'm glad for you. Are you out of you, material? You keep on being a clown. Yeah, and and you keep on doing whatever you think you're doing, David. What what do you think? How, is this going as well as you thought it might? It's far better than I thought oh, it's it would. Better. Wow. It must have been a, a little nightmare vision that you had before you came on. If this is better than you thought it would go, well, I wish you all the best, uh, David. <laughs> have a happy life. Newport. Hello, Mick. Hello, Nick. Mick. <laughs> Nick. Listen, mate, I, 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 uh, I just wanted... There's several points I wanted to make, really, but the first thing about the petrol status is why on earth have we got a maximum charge? We should have a minimum charge. You know, 35 quid. If you if you pull in, or 30 quid even, pull in, and you can't get 30 quid's worth of fuel in your car, you still pay 30 quid. People will start thinking twice about whether they need to put into a queue or not. Well, that's an interesting idea. Well, then, well, why are we doing it? I mean, minimum charge. Everyone can get a minimum. They can get five quid in the car. Mm. You know? Yeah, but I wonder how many people are just buying a tiny, tiny amount just in order to keep themselves uh, topped up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I love your show. I don't show your politics mostly, certainly not on Brexit, but you're so entertaining. I'll tell you what, you should be the opposition. <laughs> well, I'll, you should. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start I'll, first thing on Monday. How does that sound? <laughs> well, you know, I got. A, I was listening to your, your earlier caller, and he's got a point. One of the reasons that I voted for Brexit was because I felt that it was it was compressing salaries in this country. I've got a, I've got a friend of mine who's a coach driver, for instance. He pays he's paid ten pound an hour. He works up to fifteen hours a day. Every time he and his colleagues go for a ride always come back was well we've got plenty of polls waiting for your job if you don't if you don't uh, if you don't want to work for this that has always been a problem it does compress salaries in this country and if you want to raise salaries in this country we've got to sort it out here not not rely on uh, overseas labour. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, yeah, work. Yeah, but yes, okay. I, 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 I sort of agree. It's a very complicated issue, we're making it, it much easier than it actually is. But yeah. it's indisputable that if wages rise, then the cost of whatever those people produce will also will rise. Up. Yeah. That's so, right. so and your, so your yeah. risen wages won't perhaps actually um, make you any better off. In fact, they might make you worse off. 
I agree, and, I, and I, <laughs> this is sensitive, I know, but I've said to years that, that it would be difficult coming out of Europe and we would have years of pain, but eventually, long term, when I look at my, my son, my, my kids, my grandchildren now, I think it would be a better place to live. Mm. Ask them about that, that, Mick. Yeah. Ask them about that and see what yeah. they say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah I know. You're, I agree, and I fight that with my son. And we, we go on very well, but we do disagree on this mm. point. But I do believe it. You've and narrowed I, their horizons. They, they used to be able to go and study anywhere they liked for nothing in Europe, for free. And now um, they are restricted to uh, just studying in this country for uh, what ten, fifteen thousand pound a yeah. year is going to cost them. Yeah, I agree, and I, 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 I can't argue against that. But I still don't see that that's necessarily a wrong thing. Uh, you know, it, I, I, I do feel that, that we've been controlled and governed, if you like, and our laws have been laid down by an unelected. Uh, assembly over... Mick, uh, you've got to be kidding me. I place. refuse to have this argument again. <laughs> it, it was not an unelected assembly. Those people that were not elected directly by the people of Europe were elected by the people that we elected, as opposed yeah, to uh, this country, country in, when you just control. donate a certain amount to the Conservative Party and you get to go and sit in the House of Lords for the rest of your life I as agree. an unelected bureaucrat it. making rules for this country. Yep, yeah, that's a very good point and I accept that, but the problem here is that England or, or, or UK, our contribution to the European Union, when you're electing a parliament, if you like, is, is minimal. We don't really have a say. And they of course we do. Of course we do. Well, here we, here we go back to which rules and regulations have you been suffering under uh, that we um, actually made by sitting around the table which ones are you, um, you most aggrieved <laughs> about and and the answer because I've had this conversation so many times I know precisely how it will go I'll say which laws are you um, are most keen to get rid of and the answer will come all of them which means you've got absolutely no idea the, the, the idea has been put into the minds of people that the reason you have not achieved your potential is because of these this sort of amorphous cloud of people below you on the ladder, pulling you down. Added to these, uh, this, this sort of um, uh, devilish, unelected bureaucracy. But the EU is a far more democratic organisation than uh, the, uh, the government of this country. Half of which is in the House of Lords and we didn't elect any of those people. And they get to sit there forever. I can't have that conversation again, Mick. I just can't. Over and over and over again. And it always goes the same way. Which laws do you want rid of? Uh, all of them. Or they'll say, um, vacuum cleaners. Oh, crying out loud. It's painful. Surbiton, hello, Diana. Hi there. Hello there. I thought I'd upset you. You never liked that when I phoned about two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I'll upset him. I say hi there. <laughs> yeah. Hello there. Hello there. Now there's one thing we've got with Brexit. Okay. Vaccinations. Nothing to do with Brexit. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because if we Doesn't... would have still been in the EU, we mm. would have to be uh, measured out with our uh, vaccinations, the same as any other EU country. Diana, you must know by now that that's not true. Please tell it me you're joking. True. But it, it is isn't. true. It is true. See, you're, you're not where, right this time. No, I'm right. You aren't right. Where did you learn that information? On the where internet? did I learn it? Yes. Well, with my brain work. That's where I learned it. <laughs> well, I, I think we've <laughs> located the problem. Yeah, well, well you, it don't take a genius. It's just a rocket science. We've, we've had a mass, a mass vaccination. Mm. So where we got all our vaccinations from. And also, Australia run out. And we've loaned a load to them. Diana. So where, so where have we got all our vaccinations from? Diana, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try not to be very rude, but... Um, and that would be a good old try. I, I want <laughs> you to know that I mean this with the greatest possible respect. But you're... <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I can't wrong. say. You, you are wrong. I can't for a say it. I almost and said. And also, you're getting an idiot. back to the fuel. Listen yeah. to this. 
A chap who owns a garage up in Ber- Birmingham mm. said, I've just had a tanker load come in. Yeah. He said, it's run out in a few hours. He said, do you know how long it generally takes to get rid of that tanker load? He a said, week, a week. Five days. Like I said. He said, last five days. Yeah. It is all to do with panic bloody buying. It's all it's to do with. Diana, it's not panic buying when you are running out of fuel. Well, it is. No, people, it isn't. People, people, they ought to. They ought to ration it the same as what they did in the war nine years after. If the war, you they really rationed. want to make people panic, then you'll talk about rationing. <laughs> yes, rationing. Yes, but say no to them. They can only have thirty pounds worth at a time. And then they'll take thirty pounds, and then they'll go to the back of back of the queue and um, and, and yeah, and queue up for another hour or so, exactly. and run out of fifteen pounds worth of it, and they and they've got to make it up again. Yeah. So that's two things <laughs> that's you've been. That's how loopy people are that's today. Two things you've been wrong about on the one call. No, I have not. Completely you. You, you're incorrect never wrong. in every I'm respect. I'm right about the vaccine. You are I totally am. wrong about the vaccine, Diana. No, I'm not. Can I'm I write about the vaccine? It's you what's wrong. Make a change for you to own up that you are wrong. Diana, you're you've, never wrong. You've are already you? you've, never. No, that's correct. You've already admitted that you have no knowledge of it. You just dreamt it up. I'm not telling you where I've got the knowledge from. No way, because I because I should be giving away too many things. And as regards jobs, my. My daughter's been in HR for over 20 years, and she works for a very, very reputable, reputable place. A what? And, and she said all the jobs they've got, from menial jobs, middle management, top management, they cannot fill the post. Right. So, so that's so, a load of so, rubbish you're talking about. There's no jobs around. I, I never said, I've never said there's no jobs around. There's two million jobs waiting to be filled. Well, you just said that there's a lot, there's a lot, no, there's not a lot of jobs. No, I did not. Yes, you did earlier on about... Oh, my um, God, that's three things you've got wrong in the one call, Diana. No, no. Do you want to go for you, a fistful? When you said about Johnson's speech, he's saying about more jobs, and you said, oh, there's less jobs. No, no, I said that they're not the party of creating jobs, they're the party of disappearing jobs. Well, we all know that. All under conservative government, all they do is cut, cut, cut. That's all oh, they well, know. Finally, you got something right. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> we, we should and end I'm on that. Po- we I'm should, tell you Diana. Else no, now. please don't. Let's end on that positive note. You finally got something right. It's a little no. bit of positivity. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Diana. Please just don't just think up the answer to questions. Look it up. Do you have the internet where you live? I believe that the internet has actually reached Surbiton. Oh, the stuff you'll find on the internet, Diana. Disgusting. If only you'll look. The vaccination programme has zero to do with Brexit. Not one single thing. Nothing at all. Uh, Wembley. Hello, Linda. Hello. Linda. Yeah, well, I don't think they should be doing it, especially not for hours. Maybe they could do it for 10, 20 minutes. But I don't think they should do it at all. But, but you know, they're they're alien. I be, I, you know, I believe we've got to save the planet. But they're just alienating people. Um, it, it's not it's not going to promote their cause at all, as far as the population goes. I'm sure. Um, and I don't think we're going to have much choice about doing something about climate change because of this problem with the uh, gas supply. We've got to find alternative ways of heating our homes eventually. Well, uh, what is, seems to be happening at the moment about the mm. shortage of gas is that we're firing up the coal power stations. Oh, well, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't think about that. But nevertheless, well, you know, they are, they are alienating people. That is a, they can do it other ways. Mm. And they're getting the wrong publicity. They're getting publicity, but then, you know... They're making people angry and people will go against what, what they're trying to promote. And, and then they forget about China, which is supposed to be one of the worst polluting countries. Um, I mean, we, we, we should try and start making our own things rather than, than depending on China to supply us with our goods. Well, the problem with that is that it, the, yeah. the labour costs would be so high in this country that, that you wouldn't get people buying the stuff. Yeah, well, I think we've got to be prepared to pay a bit more. And then the mm. other alternative might be India. You know, we still have to pay more. 
Um, but I think someone said that, you know, there's an opportunity in India to get them to produce some things. Well, I'm sure that uh, there's no end of things that India produces that we consume. I mean, we pe people always talk about, uh, you know, people have come over here and have taken our jobs. But what the truth of it is that we've sent our jobs abroad. Lancaster, Rupert. Hello, Nick. How you doing? Great, mate. You know all the problems that you listed at the top of the show? Yes. They're happening all over Europe and in the US. Not too. not to the same extent, though. No, that no. Well, how do you know, mate? Well, I've got the figures in what front do you of mean me. To the I've same got... extent. Well, which word in that sentence are you having the most trouble understanding? Extent. <laughs> <laughs> extent. Do you not do you not know what ex do you not know what extent means? I mean, no, I do know. I do know what extent means. Right. I want you to define how Britain is having more problems than Europe and the US. Well, it's it's easy, Rupert. All you have to do, do you have the internet in Lancaster? I certainly do. Well, then just look it up, man. Very, very simple. D don't ask with your mouth. Ask with your eyes. That's what my dad used to say. And I'd be like, "No, oh, Dad, why can't you just tell me?" I'm not doing your homework for you, Rupert. Oh well, okay. In this one specific instance, I will. Mainland Europe is experiencing an estimated 400,000 lorry drivers shortages as. Uh, Port closures across China and um, here, there and everywhere has sparked a global supply chain crisis. 400,000 lorry drivers short they are in mainland Europe. 400,000. Now that's not nothing. Britain is facing uh, over 100,000 shortfall. Let's just make it a nice round number. 100,000 shortfall of HGV drivers. So keep those figures in mind. They've got 400,000 short on uh, mainland Europe and we've got 100,000 short here. Now, can you tell where I'm going with this? Uh, here's a call in Wolverhampton. Hello, Alfie. Oh, Al hi there, mate. You're right. Alfie, good, thanks. Uh, I mean, what Dan's just said there, £25 an hour. I don't know what he's doing for £25 an hour, but I can't certainly sort of get them sorts of rates. Uh, like the guy was saying before, the conditions aren't good to be a driver, but the conditions aren't good to be a paramedic or a police officer or a firefighter. Yeah, but at least those people don't have to wash in a sink and eat crisps they bought out of a garage shop for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yeah, mate, I've been doing the job for 20, 20 years, like, you know, I'm just giving you my... Uh, and, and, you know, as far as, like, the fuel shortage goes on now and getting the HTV drivers from wherever they get them from, whatever country, uh, uh, you know, or whether we, you know, put, put people through a fast-track test and then what are you going to do? Send them into a refinery. Mate, I had, a, I had a ADR license for five years, I did, Nick. And I could not go anywhere near a refinery because it's like a closed shop. To get on that fuel delivery, it's, a, it, it's very, it, it's quite technical. It's not rocket science, but what I will say is if it goes wrong, you've got a rocket behind you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So not only do you have to pass all the required tests to become an HGV driver, but there's also another level of tests to drive, um, I suppose quite rightly, to drive um, a, a tanker full of, of um, flammable liquid. Yeah, there's different classes what you get on your ADR licence. It's, it's, it's a week in the classroom, mate. And, uh, you know, you, you, because you can pull, at the end of that week, you can pull fuel, LPG, um, if, you, if, if it's an army test you do, and you can also do explosives and nuclear waste, but uh, it's civilian that has to be specifically required. Right. Uh, so you don't, you, so you don't get that in your week long ADR. But everything else, classes one to seven, uh, you can pull, uh, and that can be anything from sort of like uh, hospital waste uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Fuel, LPG. Now, uh, and, and everything else that you, you need because the vehicle has to be kitted out in yes. a specific way as well, you know, because of, you get a spillage in whatever sort right, of right, material. Yeah. I, I, understand, I understand that. But at the beginning you said that, uh, you know, you, you've uh, heard reports about people getting £25 an hour or considerably more yeah. than that. But um, as an mm. HGV driver yourself, you don't mm. see that where, where you are. It's not a possibility for you. I say it's not a possibility. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not calling the guy a liar, but, I mean, £25 an hour to me sounds a little bit inflated. Um, I'm pulling containers at the minute, I am, Nick, so I'm going down to Felix, though, pretty much all the while, or London Gateway, or 
Southampton or Liverpool, wherever. And uh, obviously, since they haven't given one to all sorts of like Pete Tong, um, uh, a lot of my work is taking empty containers, which was like pretty much unheard of a year ago, to various ports so they can get recycled, so they can be in the correct place. And then obviously, I'm picking up a, a load of containers to bring it back. Hmm. Um, what, what would you put uh, that down to? Well, um, the pandemic really, to be fair, has uh, fueled a lot of things because obviously people are staying at home and they're ordering loads of stuff. And then when it went peak songs in the series canal, that did really mess things up for a couple of months. There has, and I've, re- I, you know, I've, I've, I've seen the effects of that because I'm, I'm I drive containers, so I know exactly, you know, yeah. what's happened there. Okay, thanks for that, Alfie. Let's have um, Slough, Ugh. Paul. Oh, hi, Nick. Paul. Yeah, I just want to make the point, really, that even though you could say Brexit's been bad from a certain point of view, um, for some people it's worked out rather well because they've got more chance of employment, they've probably got higher wages, and they've probably been treated with a bit more respect by their employers. So well, like not who? everybody's losing here. Like who? Well, like, basically, anyone who's looking for a job at the lower end of the jobs market, particularly, obviously, the obvious examples that lorry drivers who... Hitherto, were apparently both accounts treated pretty badly. They still are. Work. Still are being treated pretty badly. They've got I to sleep they in are, lay bys. Think, They've got nowhere to I wash. Their food is change, dreadful. Well, you reckon? But yeah, this, this is the, this is the, these are the kind of contradictions. I like, kind of amusing in a way. On the one hand, we were told Brexit would be an absolute disaster mm. for, e- economically. Now we're being told because the economy is booming and there's not enough labour, Brexit's a disaster. The well, economy. On, the economy is booming. Well, this, this is the, this no, is the story. That, this is the story that was going around last week. This is the legend that was going around last week. Labour shortages are a problem because employers can't fill all the vacancies they've got because the economy is doing so well. But no, that doesn't no, make sense no, because no, Brexit no, no, they can't. No, 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 no. They can't fill the jobs that they have open because British people don't want to do those jobs. Well, you say that. This is, we, we, we live in a capitalist system. Now, are you telling me that they wouldn't do those jobs? if the wages were high enough. Well, it depends on what you mean by high enough, Paul. I mean, if... Well, if, enough, well hang on a minute. If, if, the, okay. if the job you're talking about is being a farm labourer, for instance, uh, you, yeah. where people come in for a couple of months a year and uh, they p- spend all day bending over double in uh, a field and then they go back to where they came from. I mean, what's, yeah. what level of payment would you give to people to do that? And where are they well, going to come from? Because those places where those jobs are, then there's the not a lot of people around because yeah. it's farmland. Now this is the problem. If you if you speak to a CEO right on a million quid a year, and you say to him, "How can you get paid so much?" He says, "Well, it's the market, right? I, I get paid the going rate because that's capitalism. That's how it works." But you're arguing that the guys at the bottom. That rule doesn't apply to them. Of course if, it doesn't. If, if there's, of course if there's it doesn't. Of labour, their wages shouldn't go up to maintain some kind of weird equilibrium at the bottom. Paul, oh, this is a bizarre argument. The market, no, it's not bizarre. Of course, it isn't. The market can only stand a certain level of wage for a job at the bottom of the scale because well, pe- if, because if it would cost more to produce the goods than people are prepared to pay for them. The company goes bust. Yeah, that's capitalism. Right? If you can't afford to pay your workforce... So that's your solution, that the country just goes bust? No, my solution is that we get a, a redistribution of wealth from the top to the bottom. Oh, yeah, well, good luck with that. Well, no, because it's going to happen. It, this, this is exactly what we're Are you, tr- are you, uh, 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 Paul? Look out the window. Uh, the, redistri- the redistribution of wealth is going in the opposite direction. It's going from the bottom to the top. Costa, Costa just put up their wages by five percent. Oh wow! Really? A whole five percent. No, what are, what are no, they earning per hour now? Five percent might mean something to somebody. It might not mean much to you, maybe, but it might mean something to people who work at Costa. But my point being, the only reason they've done that is because they're now competing at the bottom with a scarcity of labour. Capitalism is working. Brexit has brought about this situation. So, no, it, like, it, it is it is not working is, because it, it, listen, no. you can't keep putting the wages of the lowest paid people up without affecting the price of the product that they're selling. Swindon. Hello, James. Hello. James. Hello. Uh, Yes, James. Hello. 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 Hi. 
Why? Right. So the best thing about Brexit, and it has to be the best thing about Brexit, is that the crown stamp has returned to pint glasses. Finally, a pint will be a pint again. Exactly. Yes. Oh, is that it? <laughs> but, but, but also, the, the other the other good thing about Brexit is that we got the uh, the vaccines quicker. Yeah, but that didn't happen, though. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Ah, but it didn't. Well, well, my research, it did. Oh, your research, uh, which uh, which um, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Which uh, amounted to what? What did your research amount to? Looking it up on your the, Facebook the, feed. The, the, we uh no youtube actually oh youtube yeah okay I, I take it back you're completely correct in every respect <laughs> i knew it i knew it yeah all right thanks a lot james i bet people didn't even notice that the pint mu that, that uh, crown mark had gone off a pint i mean who, who cares about it one way or another wallington hello john oh uh, hi nick john. nice to talk to you again it's not just china's aggressive behavior in the south china sea in southeast asia it's their backing of a very aggressive Iran in the Middle East. So if Israel take issue with a nuclear treaty and decide to destroy their nuclear facilities like they did the Iraqis, you could well see Chinese troops alongside the Iranians all over the Middle East. They have to be stood up to. Uh, well, see, that, now that just sounds like we've talking, we're talking ourselves into World War Three. No, no, we're just reacting to aggressive behavior by both china and iran you know us going us, us, us sailing eleven thousand miles into chinese waters rather seems like we are the aggressor we're not the aggressor they are right but <laughs> everything 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 that you just said makes it sound as though that the opposite is true I mean, what business is it of ours to be there in the first place? It's 11,000 miles away. Why are we even there? What's it got to do with us? Why do we always f seem to think that it's our job to be the world's police? That's not us anymore. That's ancient history. We, we just can't let it go, can we? China would snuff us out like a light. That's probably not how the next war is going to be fought, though. If the Chinese really wanted to upset us, they really wanted to um, uh, r ruin the nation, then they just switch our electricity off. And they could probably do it uh, by giving uh, some Chinese teenager a laptop. If they really wanted to upset us, then they, they would cancel the shipment of the next iPhone. Let's have a call in uh, Islington. Frank. Hello? Frank. Hello? Frank. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello. Um, yes, Frank. Hello. I love. I, who's that lady in the background? I love your ideology that laughter is the best medicine. Is that my ideology? Could be that laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> um, I don't know. I prefer aspirin myself. Asp anodin extra. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Boris Johnson speaks. I thought it was. I thought it was superb. I thought it was brilliant. In what way? I just thought he, you know, he rattled on for. I mean, nobody ever gave a speech that lasted that long. What was the guy, the American President Bush, that couldn't talk for ten seconds? Remember him? George Bush. Absolutely. Yeah, George. Yes. George Bush, mm -hmm. the w guy was w the was a president of the United States. Yes, whenever, he, he whenever, used to be the low watermark in uh, presidencies <laughs> um, until uh, this guy uh, came uh, along. Don't be rude. That guy. Reminded me of my brother, because my brother's pretty, my brother, when he comes out to me to visit me, I can't get two words out of him. Sounds like George Bush. Right. Okay, then. But I thought, right, <laughs> Mr. I thought, I thought that, um, I thought uh, Boris's speech was brilliant. You I didn't hear it, did you? No. I listened to the whole thing. I very much doubt that. Which, which, pa which and, passage was the most brilliant? And the chem... Come on, mate, it's a hot one piece. The chem at the frog thing, I thought, was icing on the cake and a little reference to Miss Piggy. 
I gave him 11, I gave him 11 out of 10. 11 a, out of 10. That makes I'm as much Labour. sense as anything else that you've said on this call. And I'm a Labour voter. Yeah, I doubt it. Oh. <laughs> I very much doubt that. A Labour voter, he says. Liar! Don't believe you. First, here is an important to call in Chelmsford. Tris. Hi there, Nick. How you doing? Not too bad, thank you. It's first time caller. Good man. So, <laughs> how it normally works is um, I say good man, and then you tell us what you wanted to say. So let's let's so, start from the top. Yeah, go on then, Nick. Sorry. Good man. Thanks, Nick. Now, the reason why I was calling in, um, you were asking for benefits of leaving the EU. Yeah. Well, one of my benefits was that we've recently signed a new trade partnership with Australia and the US and AUKUS. Oh, no, we haven't. What do you mean? We, we haven't done neither of those two things. Well, not a trade deal, but we do, we're doing the submarines off the French now. <laughs> we're doing the submarines off the French. Right, <laughs> yeah, so, exactly so that, that has zero to do with a trade deal between Australia and America and us. That's not a trade deal. That's, uh, that's an arms deal. Big difference, huge. And we don't well, even know what our part is going to be. I mean, uh, uh, was it Liz Truss? <laughs> I find well, it hard, way, to, I mean, hard to bring her we name up without the laughing. EU, if we were still past the EU, I don't think that we could do that of against course, the French. Of course we could. Why? Well, why not? Well, I don't think that we, we, we could have done that. It would have had to have gone through some kind of EU part, um, parliament or something like that. A, a, tr a deal to make arms? Of course it wouldn't. No. Is that it? Well, that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that we could have done. We could not have done this being part of the EU. Yeah, you keep saying that, Tris, as though it's true, but it isn't true. It has nothing to do with the truth. You just right. thought it and didn't check it, but because you thought it, you um, concluded that no further th uh, thought or inquiry was required. Th thinking it makes it true. <coughs> it has nothing to do with it. It was just a. It was just. A, uh, it wasn't a free trade deal. It was just an arms deal. It was just a business deal. And we don't even know which part we're going to get. Liz Truss said it, I think her actual phrase was, it might create up to a hundred jobs. Was that what she said? A hundred jobs. Oh, fabulous. Great. We have two million jobs that we're trying to fill. A hundred jobs. <laughs> Comical. Um, anyway, uh, better luck next time, Tris. Good effort. Uh, Willow. What a nice name. Lewisham. Oh, hi there. Is, uh, your, is, yes. your, is your name well, Willow? Willow's my nickname. I went by uh, back home. Uh, my name's Arthur. Right. Arthur, uh, Arthur Morgan. Audrey. Uh, uh, Arthur Morgan. Audrey. Uh, uh, Morgan. Morgan. Right. Arthur uh, Morgan. But anyway, um, can you I'll hear call, me okay? Can I call you Audrey? Not really, but go ahead. Okay, well, I'll, I'll speak nice and loud. Now, I'm from the United States. So essentially, I'm from a different time. But uh, the way I was living, uh, we didn't really have much of nothing, hardly any electricity, running water. But what we did have where I live was uh, produce, okay, produce. And what I'm seeing now uh, in my stay in the UK is a lack of produce uh, because I'm in the flower business these days. I used to be in the train business. But these days, I can't get flowers delivered to where I am, you see. And it, I think it's because of this uh, Brexit, uh, this Brexit thing. You can't get flowers, did you say? I'm having a shortage of deliveries, my friend, of, uh, of flowers, of peonies, of roses, of lilies, of, of all sorts of things, dahlias. Uh, and, and I, I don't, I don't really understand what's going on. I mean, well, that's you and me that. both. I, I've got no idea what's going on, and this is my own show. Are you serious? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like much of a joke. I mean, like I've been seeing all, all sorts of uh, friends of mine have been not getting their deliveries through. Uh, you know, if it's vegan cashew cake deliveries or coconut shampoo subscriptions, you know, I do all, all, all sorts of great shows. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there because that's just too specific not to be a joke. 
if that's not a joke, then I apologise. But I thought that the, the, it's the, the, you had me at coconut shampoo. Thanks a lot, Willow, if that is indeed your name. Can I call you Audrey? <laughs> it was a vegan nut cake, you say? <laughs> yeah. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> Portsmouth. Hello, Harry. Oh, yes. Hello there, Nick. Um, I almost think I heard her uh, retract the word scum, did she? I was watching, I think, Channel 4 or ITN, and she was wearing the little backpack containing her speech, disappearing down some stairs at the conference. And the microphone and cameras were looking at the back of her head, and she turned slightly, and I could have swore... I might have been wrong, but I could have swore I heard her say... She retracted scum. She obviously didn't retract anything else because that was she couldn't have said that walking down the stairs. But right. I, I, I swore I, I heard her say. Well, I haven't seen that, but um, I retract that, scum. Right. Well, I, I don't know. Perhaps, uh, perhaps she did. You, you know uh, better than I did. I did not see that well, clip. Yeah, you, you know, it's just that bit where she's go disappearing down the stairs, being chased by people. She got that little backpack with her speech in the mm, back yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, I know. And you, she turns. You, you, you said that, and I refer you to the answer I gave some moments ago. Uh, but thanks for that, Harry. I'll uh, I'll look that clip up. Uh, Colchester. Hello, John. Good evening, Nick. <clears throat> just uh, this uh, fuel, fake fuel crisis, in my opinion, fake it fuel. doesn't seem to add up very much. Three days ago, there was no petrol crisis, was there? No. Everyone was happy. H-A-P-P-Y. So, Happiness was all about. Yeah, I can remember three days ago. Oh, it's, it's like it was only okay. uh, the, the day before the day before yesterday. Right. BP announced four stations closed. Yes. Assume that each station had its own uh, tanker driver, which obviously it doesn't. A tanker driver will serve more than one. But just assume each one had its own. BP are short of four drivers. And there are hundreds of drivers. That don't ring true. But what ha would happen if a major company had a surfeit of petrol and they wanted to get rid of it sharpish? <laughs> it? No, 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 no. Yeah. How about creating a full supply and mm. get Bodger Johnson to say, don't panic, Mr. Mannering, don't panic. And what happens? Everybody all panics. the ships all panic yeah. and all the petrol ends up in the cars. Right. Well, you certainly have got something there, uh, John. Uh, keep your um, eyes on the wheel and your hands... How does it go? <laughs> keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the something and keep something your like people eyes on the road yeah. ahead. We're day, in the back seat singing and uh, hugging with Ted. Disgusting. What, all of them? Isn't that awful? OK, uh, excellent work there, John. So it's a, it's a ruse. This is the news. It's a ruse. There was a bloke in front of me paying uh, last night when I was uh, filling up the car with petrol who said pretty much the exact same thing. He said, uh, you know, all these morons are queuing up here. <laughs> he spoke like this. He spoke like this. You don't know that he didn't. He said, all these morons queuing up here because uh, BP closed a couple of garages to concentrate on the motorways, which is apparently what happened. Uh, and if it didn't happen like this, then I uh, apologise. I'm very sorry for suggesting otherwise. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed up. I am so sorry that I screwed up. Uh, Hornchurch. Uh, Taye. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, like I said, I think, I think this whole thing is ridiculous. Right? I mean, we've got people sitting on the M25 disrupting people who want to go out to work and earn a living, how do they get to the M25? Did they drive there or walk there? Do you understand? So I think it's all hypocrisy. Uh, we've got these people who are shouting climate change. Do you know in, 19, in the 1970s, Time magazine actually um, produced an article saying the world was going to freeze up in 20 years, that Britain will be Siberian climate in 2020. Where do they get all these, their, um, their hypotheses from? Where do they create them from? These people just want to cause panic. I believe that 
the world has been created to sustain human life on it. Yes, we will get some adverse weather conditions, but it doesn't mean, I mind you, it used to be global freezing before. Now it's climate change or global warming because they couldn't put anything down to it. Well, the weathermen well, cannot the, the, even the reason, I think the reason people started to call it um, climate change rather than global warming is precisely to counter... Uh, arguments that you're putting forward that um, will amount to in the winter somebody will go out and pick up a snowball and say look there's no such thing as global warming because it's freezing outside that is what you're describing is weather now I am I, I, I'm not familiar with the article itself but I do know that in the 70s people were uh, uh, declaring I, and I don't know who those people were by the way but they were saying that we were going to enter a new world experts, what? world experts. <laughs> okay they were saying right. that we were going to enter a, an ice age but for whatever um, information they, they had at the time is is not the information that climate scientists are uh, familiar with now so you know we, we used to scientists world experts used to say that the moon was pulled across the sky by um, a god on a wing chariot now we know better oh come on you know, we're, we're talking about today's world we're not talking about greek mythology here we're talking about real side the truth is look there will be climate change there will be there will be adverse weather conditions the world will get warm sometimes it will be cold sometimes these things will happen the human beings on the planet yes but don't, but don't we, you think that it's a worthwhile um a uh, 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 process to try to ameliorate some of the worst of the changes that we're facing. I mean, you you can say yes, the world used to be, a, uh, you know, a flaming ball of gas in the sky, um, and that may be true, and it's cooler now. But we should we should just carry on as we are, regardless of the consequences, which, which seem to be becoming more evident by the day how how is it becoming more evident all, all we can do is measure um changes in the weather condition over over the years and it hasn't really changed that much however you mean in your lifetime you haven't you personally yeah. haven't noticed it but but that's that's not the same as uh, it hasn't happened okay i mean ultimately what, what i'm trying to say is that this thing is being blown out of proportion, totally out of proportion. Yeah, you, yes, you, have, you have no understanding of what the proportion actually is. I mean, if some of the people are right and the um, sea levels do rise and London becomes uh, partly uninhabitable, then the cost of, um, of uh, fixing that problem is absolutely unimaginable because it's a problem that will also be happening in New York and Los Angeles and Hong Kong and every other major uh, urban area on Earth. Look, it's, it's, and I'll tell you why I, I disagree with that, right? And I will say that China, which is probably the largest consumer of fuels, right, in the world, will continue to burn fossil fuels and even if the whole world stops the appetite for energy in china will continue to grow and it's not going to change anything right so because uh, and i hear this so many times but because uh, some places are going to do nothing about it then no one should do anything about it that's not really much of an argument, Taye, but um, I appreciate the call. Thanks for that. Hammersmith. Hello, Sarah. Um, hello. I think this information is incorrect because new builds are built to current building regs and they won't be signed off by building control if the, um, if the installation is not of the correct thickness. Right. I just had to do a, a, a property that was completely burnt out and we had to put... Um, more rock coinsulation in, which actually um, reduced the size of the room. And that was in a, um, an older property. Mm. Um, that was a timber built property. So, you know, it had cavity wall insulation and all like that. But it's not the new builds. I've got new build buildings that are literally unbearable. You go in there and it's so hot in the summertime, you cannot breathe. 
it's well, that, that, that means that well no that's the opposite of that if that means they're not insulated at all if it if the heat comes from the outside to the inside then that means there's no insulation no 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 it's internal insulation it's so insulated internally that i've got residents that are telling me that they want to put air conditioning in and i can't give them the authorization to do that because they're cladded on the outside so that breaches the cladding and obviously that would then you know cause a fire safety risk but it is, it's over-insulated. The properties are so hot because of the amount of insulation. That doesn't make it, but that, that makes no sense. Insulation itself won't heat your property up. It will stop whatever the temperature is from outside coming inside. No, it heats, it, it heats the property up. What it does is How it, can it? It, it makes the internal... Because the walls are insulated, the roof's insulated, everything's... It's a warm roof. Everything's insulated. Therefore, it's docking in the heat. That's what's happening in these properties. But no, it, it doesn't keep and in the heat if there's no heat on the inside. It will keep out the heat from the outside, surely. That's the whole purpose of the of, of, of insulation. It maintains some sort of uh, constant temperature on the inside, regardless of the actual uh, heat that's being uh, produced in there. But, but anyway, um, uh, Sarah, I th again, I think we're sort of drifting off topic. Uh, Camden, Elizabeth. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Elizabeth. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was just thinking something about what you said. Thinking? Oh, well, that's to be discouraged. Uh, I, I, will, I will take that as good advice. However, I want to get this really bad thought across. What might be a good idea, because everybody likes to put him down, but he, if he had a lot of tents, he could turn it the other way around. Seeing we're all into Trump's hair and Bodge's hair, I think Keir Starmer should have a very, very long hairstyle and toss his head and not have it all chic and feathered and nice, <laughs> but have a really, um, I don't know, maybe a cavalier-type look would go well. Well, as in round heads and cavaliers? No, 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 no. I was in Laughing Cavalier. Oh, right, the Laughing Cavalier. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> that kind of Cavalier. Well, I, I'm just remembering the painting. I um, think that, uh, yeah, I know the painting. With uh, lovely ringlets at the bottom. That's and all that. right, yeah. I mean, uh, having crazy hair does seem to be a thing these days in political circles. But I yeah. think that Keir Starmer has his own hair style, doesn't he? I mean, he, it's not um, it, undistinctive. He extended it. Extended it, yeah. Yes. About eight inches, ten oh, inches, twelve right. inches. Now, in imperial measurements, can you do that in metric for us? Uh, we did that before you and I, and we had a fight about it. Well, you double it and add 32 to get feet. Quite. So, uh, uh, two times ten is 20, plus 32 is 62. So that's 62 feet long. I, I don't think that would work. You're not okay. making any sense, Elizabeth. I know, but that's both of us. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> you can only night take night. yeah all right good night you can only take care of your own sense and uh, allow me to see if i can fashion some sense out of my own yeah a little a little less hair gel Keir. <laughs> here is a call in bromley hello joe hello mate joe. Uh, hello mate uh yeah um petrol lovely yes. isn't it i mean mm -hmm. where i live where i live at the top of my road there's a bp select and it's always busy even in the good days, always busy, because they're all buying bread, butter, milk. It's a petrol station. I want to fill my tank up. Yes. But you sit, you sit and wait for ages. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's a that's a given. Um, but now I've gone up the top of the road, and it is tailed back to the end of the earth. <laughs> you know, don't panic, don't panic. Yeah. And what's the first thing everybody does straight panic, away? Panic. Panic. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we heard this? We had this with COVID, didn't we? You know, don't, don't. that guy in Australia that went out and bought 100, you know, toilet roll bags. Right. Got his receipt, went back later when it calmed down a bit and said, can I have my money back? The, the manager said, no, you can't have it. No, no, mate, you bought them. Yeah. They're yours. Secondhand toilet rolls. No, thank you. Say that. Do you know what I mean? I, how how crazy is it that we once ran an empire and now we can't buy a gallon of petrol, the gas is going to run out, you know, but don't worry about that. Don't panic. Well, no. Don't panic. <laughs> what is going on? I mean, I mean, is Boris either that clueless, that inept, that powerless that he can't run a country? Well, you know, um, clueless and inept. Yes, um, I'll be on board with that. But is he powerless? No, he has an enormous amount of power. 
It's just well, whether, whether, he, will, whether he'll use it for good or not is, uh, well, we don't really know. I mean, I well, the man, the, the, man, the man has got to sort something out because, you know, I'm an old boy, hmm. well retired and all that garbage, but at the end of the day, you've got to look at it and go, please get on with the job. Yeah. Everybody say we haven't got this, we haven't got that, mm -hmm. we've got no money, we're running out of this, we're running out of, you know, families, him and her are working, him and him are working, she and she are working, whatever. They're working and they still qualify for benefits. I mean, what is going on? The fundamental is very, very, very simple. It's all right, prices rising through the sky, but if wages don't follow, we know where we're going to end up, don't we? Well, wages are going up and they're probably going up at an unsustainable rate because the prices haven't hit the people in the pocket yet. The price rises haven't sort of worked their way through the system yet. But when they do, then people will start to complain. But they say, you know, they say things like we have lorry drivers, so get some lorry drivers. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, can... unfortunately, Joe, the the one problem that is either causing or exacerbating all of the above is the one thing that they cannot admit is causing a problem. So if you can't admit what the problem actually is, you can't deal with it. This is why they're refusing to bring um, lorry drivers in. They're refusing to bring the enough workers to work on farms, to work in uh, uh, you know, food processing and caring and all, all of these other uh, uh, occupations that are desperate for the the workers that have left because we screamed at them for five years that we didn't want them here anymore. If you admit that Brexit, there it is, I've said it, is mm. part of or the problem, then you can do something about it. But they will not admit that. They can't because it's the only thing they've got. I mean, what else do they actually stand for apart from let's get Brexit done? I mean, anything? Can you think of anything? Don't tell, don't oh, say levelling up because well, please. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, me, me as an old boy, yeah, I, did. I, voted. I voted for Brexit. Not ashamed of it, not proud of it. I voted for Brexit because I assumed that there was some common sense that could rule that would give those who voted, which, well, in my particular case, for out. I wanted sovereignty back. But that's, that's, it? that's a completely meaningless uh, phrase. Sovere the, you, you didn't vote to get sovereignty back. What, what does that mean? It, it doesn't mean anything at all. It's just one of those catchphrases, those buzzwords that people just throw that's out. Fair, meaningless. That Nick, that's a fair comment, and you're always known to be fair. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is fundamentally very simple. Right. Fundamentally very simple. Mm -hmm. When you vote for something, you vote for a premise. You vote for a belief. Yes, you vote for correct. something that you wish to occur. Right, and you were lied to, Joe. Well, of course. Over and over and, and over and, again. And, and sadly, sadly, me, like so many millions of other people, yeah. I'm sure. You took it on face value. And I thinking, yeah. well, what was all that about? Right. You know, I mean, I mean, I have a daughter who who lives in Spain, who loves the Spanish culture, who wishes to be part of the EU. Dad, what have you done? Dad, what have you done? Yeah, what have you done, Dad? Well, but but <laughs> that's what we do, isn't it? I mean, we re we you know we we believe what we believe in, and we react accordingly. You you believe against all the evidence to the contrary, all of the promises and and like fantasies that were uh, sold to you as um, reasons for voting to leave the European Union. M but I believe. Me yeah. Meanwhile, practic practically every expert on earth was telling you not to do it, but you did it anyway. But, uh, but, but a belief is a belief, yeah. is it not? I mean, what is? And the, why I think you've got we, it. Why, why you, are we now believing? Mm. In in a government, well, all right. Some of us are. Some of us, a lot of us, may not be. But you know, you you have to look. We we can't have, if you like, a total uh, situation of anarchy. You know, we have to believe in something, and we have to have. Yeah, leaders. But, but believing in Brexit is 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 like a religion because it doesn't uh, uh, bear up to any scrutiny. There there is no logic to it. It's just a it's it's just belief of of uh, of a fantastical tomorrow i mean and each promise just falls by the wayside but people won't admit it 
they won't admit that they've been had because, like I keep saying, it's too much loss of face and uh, too much loss of hope. That's the important part. They're pinning their hopes and dreams that, um, that the, the people that were holding them back from achieving their potential, could, if they could just leave, then uh, everything would be all right. And they left. And <laughs> everything is just as predicted by people who are saying, no, don't, don't vote, leave. It just as predicted. I mean, it's blooming obvious, isn't it? There's, there's shortages in all of the professions that we used to rely on foreigners to do. Let's have a call in uh, Streatham. Hello, John. Hello there, Nick. Hi. Good, good to talk to you, John. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? No, yeah, I don't, I don't really mean to be controversial, right? Oh, but no. I oh, think no. now, no, listen, Brexit in a way, Michael Moore said that Brexit and the vote of Trump were both Molotov cocktails, figuratively speaking, being thrown at the system, right? Mm hmm. And not wanting to ever agree with Priti Patel and Dominic Raab, but they did say that British people are the m most lazy idols in the world. <laughs> they did, right? yes. They did and say the, that, yeah. Now, now your, your esteemed colleague, James O'Brien, often said that, like to say that, oh, they, that, that was a bad thing for them to say, but I think that's the first right thing they've ever said, you know, because we are quite lazy. Uh, um, are we? Well, I mean, how many of us are fruit picking now that all the uh, Romanians and Bulgarians have left? Well, I mean, if you, if you went to Germany or France, how many of the, their uh, uh, local citizenry would be out in the fields yanking tubers out of the ground? None, none of no. them, because they don't want to do that work either. No, but in the restaurant trade, if you go to France and oh, before well, yeah. COVID, I used to travel. Yeah, it's different. They did have, yeah. you know, they had some some years and stuff. And here, it's yeah. all Ricky. Ricky Gervais said it's all surly. Uni students who just all stand there going, mm, I'm like, you ninny. No, I don't. And, I don't think that's true. It's all foreigners who are um, who, who who are either used to or like or appreciate that kind of work. We don't. It's it's odd because you associate Brits with uh, service. You know, butlers no, and maids and yeah, butlers and maids and nannies. I mean, you know, traditionally, if you look at any Victorian film of um, like a like a big house, the, all the servants are English. Well, that's still like 200 years ago. I mean, now, I, I, I know this is a controversial point to make, and I don't want to sort of take up the controversial spot from, you know, yes. former calls. But you know, will anyway. Uh, Go on. Yes. <laughs> yes. But um, we, we are idle, and now they're having to offer huge, huge amounts to, I mean, there's been huge decreases in, in, in manual, like the manual labourers have left. Yeah, but that's not, because, that's not because we're idle, it's because that manufacturing has left. We, we get other countries to manufacture it for no, us. No, we, no. We, like I, China. I, no, I meant things, I meant things like so waiting, all, all of the data say that the waiting staff have left, yeah. the fruit pickers have left. Right. Um, the drivers have left. Mm -hmm. uh, even a lot of the prostitutes have left, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> eh? Hands, hands we, on work, yes. No, we, we've all just got this churn of everybody. I was back in my hometown, which is, um, I, I won't say where it is, but all of the kids, they're all dealing drugs and they're all at uni. They're at uni. Dealing, no, none of them want to. Uh, wait a minute, I was wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. They're dealing drugs and they're at university? Well, well they, they, yeah, these are multi-skilled people. <laughs> Want to score some pot? They're all at uni now. I was at a fried chicken shop in Streatham at the start of this week, and there was a, a an overweight English girl who was calling up about her universal credits. I'm not having a go over that. Great. But she tried to strike up a conversation with me, like, oh, the government ain't giving me my money, and I ignored her. But if you would have given her a mop there and told her to do one of the jobs that the Romanians or Bulgarians used to do, she would have gone, oh, I'm, I'm going to go uni. We are idle. It's the, the data showing you. That's how the country is grinding to a halt. I don't agree. What data what, is what data is showing that we are idle? Well, the, the fact that you've got all these wait, waiter vacancies, cleaner vacancies. I tried to get some cleaners for my mother, right? Mm. And I was almost throwing money. There's no English cleaners. There's no English um, uh, gra grafters to do these things. Like you know, all the things that the Poles used to do. To, why have we got all these vacancies now? Yeah, but we have these vacancies because all of the people that did them left because we were yeah, screaming at them to get out of our country. Exactly, and now that they've left, the hard workers have left. Yes. Of the of the of Uncle Nigel's right uh, native population, no one to do those jobs. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Nigel. I'm a nutcase. Yeah. See what you've done. Well,
Well, that, you know, that, that, There's know, no it, one it, to do the jobs because the jobs were, until very recently, done by people who aren't here anymore. It takes, but, A, it would take time to get people to take up those jobs. You can't just immediately walk in to do um, like some complicated farming job or butchers or, or abattoir or, 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 yeah, or, or any of these things. M maybe the jobs are in the wrong place for the people who are unemployed you can't just up sticks and move house to go do a cleaning job Ge genuinely before before you cut me off can i just ask you i don't want to fall out with you but genuinely do you think that today's youth right and they're the ones who don't wear masks and mm -hmm. eat my right if, if you told them to now start cleaning uh travel lodge or premier in uh rooms would they do it like today's 19 year olds they're all pregnant and doing drugs to john <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I live amongst them. It's true. They're all, they're they're all, all I'm, I'm on pregnant TikTok. and doing drugs. Right. I'm on TikTok and I want to do rap music. Clean it in. That can't be bothered. John, mm. you must remember when you were a lad, you right. you probably wanted to be uh, a footballer or uh, a pop star, just like everybody oh, yeah. else does. The today's version of footballer or pop star is to be an influencer, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, I've been I've been idle for the past like 29 years we've been idle as a nation for about the past 80 years it's, i it's, just we because wanna... we don't want to do certain types of jobs does not mean to say that we are idle would it not be better if we did better more highly skilled jobs than uh, rather than um, consign ourselves to uh, a future of for cleaning up after ourselves have, have you seen the average person on the streets i'm not being rude but i mean it's y yes, hardly like yes we... you are being rude have you seen them? I mean, have you genuinely seen many? I mean, are you, do you really want them to do sort of comp complex surgery or even like you know rearrange your sofa? I mean, it's it's not we're not we're not doing great on the brain. I mean, just look at the Daily Mail comments, for example. I mean, the, it's it's not like we're highly intelligent people. Right. Okay. Well, I pushed back as much as I could, um, uh, Great Britain, um, but I can't push back any further. Thanks a lot, John. Ealing, Kumar. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you five reasons why we're better off outside of the EU. Okay. You, you have to understand the history. I vote. Are you old enough to remember pre common market? Uh, no, not really. Okay, I am. Um, uh, I remember the days when most of our fruit came from the Caribbean and Israel, most of our dairy products came from Australia. And New Zealand, and no, they were very, very no, cheap. no, they didn't. What are you? Well, you just said you didn't know. So how could you speak? <laughs> well, most of our dairy products came from Australia. Rubbish. And New Zealand. Well, I'm telling you because I was a child. I remember eating New Zealand lamb chops, Australian beef and bacon. Uh, New Zealand lamb butter. is. Oh, butter. Okay, you got one in there right, right at the end. New Zealand butter. Okay, may, maybe, but that's not most dairy. I think most well, dairy consumed well, would be milk. Me, there's there's absolutely me, no way that most forgive of the milk me, consumed in this country time, came from Australia me, and New Zealand. Excuse me, sir. If you weren't around at the time, how can you possibly comment? Kumar, you don't have to be around at the time to figure out that the milk that we drink in this country did not come from Australia or New Zealand now or at any time in history. I, I didn't say milk. Did I mention milk? You said dairy. Most dairy, Excuse you said. Excuse me. Dairy is a wide-ranging... Anyway, I don't want to get into an argument. Let me make my <laughs> point and then you can come back to me. Will you permit me that? Do you need the courtesy of that? Uh, okay, then. Otherwise, I'll hang up. I'm not. I'm not bothered to get into, into a, 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 a contretemps with you. I want to make some points which are valid. Uh, I'm two, sorry. I'm sorry, but uh, do you want the five-minute argument or the full half hour or no argument? After, after I make my points, you're most welcome to come back to me with five or half an hour. I don't care. How long do these points actually last? Because five seems quite a lot. Seconds. Forty-five Four seconds. If you don't interrupt me. Sorry. Forty-five seconds starting now. Now. Okay. Second point I would say is this, is that the fishing industry was decimated after we joined the common market. And that's one of the reasons why Michael Gove's father, for example, uh, was, was put out of work. And Michael Gove is hostile to the EU. But I remember what my mother used to, because we're mainly fish eaters, not meat eaters. Our family, we used, my mother used to bring back 
Halibut. I have not eaten halibut in 30 years, sir. Well, and order it. Halibut. Just order it. What do you mean order it? Because it's unaffordable. Unaffordable? Halibut. Yes, for, for, for average households like myself. But in, my, in, in a day when I was a kid, my mother used to buy halibut because it was affordable. That's not 45 often. seconds. You've, you've still only given me uh, two, ne because, neither of which make any you, sense. Are you really trying to tell me that the benefit of leaving the European Union is because we've got our fish back? We had a huge fishing industry, and if you stop interrupting me, I'd get through Come on, you said 45 seconds. You were not we being truthful about that. I did not, I did not, inter I did not interrupt you for 45 seconds. Well, you've interrupted the best part of 30 seconds, for sure. 45 anyway, seconds, you were much, yakking on much. about fish being the benefit of leaving the European Union. Are you out of your mind? Yes. The fishing industry because in this country no longer, is decimated after we we've left no the longer, European Union. We are no longer subject to fish quotas. We can uh, enhance... Kumar, we Take don't time. have a fishing industry anymore. It died after why leaving the European die, Union. Sir? Sir, why did it die? Because we, because the, the, this government uh, didn't know its um, bottom from its elbow and negotiated a deal which killed the fishing industry. Excuse me, sir. We've had several modes of government over 35 years. Cannot blame it on one particular government. Yeah, you the can. You can blame it on the government that negotiated the deal. Come on, are you out of your mind? You, you really think that, that we, A, used to get uh, most of our dairy from New Zealand and Australia? And that the fishing industry in this country has benefited from leaving the European Union. Is that actually your position? I happen to know what I'm talking about. No, I'm you don't. Point. If you think that the fishing industry in this country has benefited from leaving the European Union, you've got no idea what you're talking about. It's hard to believe that anybody can actually say that out loud. Do you get the news where you live? So I'll ask again, does anybody have any positives from leaving the European Union so far? Unreal. I, he should have hung up the phone uh, right at the beginning of that. He would have um, avoided a lot of embarrassment. Oh yeah, the fishing industry is doing just great. Get the fishing industry on the phone and they'll explain it to us. They're not answering. <laughs> Colchester. Hello, Joel. Excuse me, I'm giving you. Joel. Hi there. Hello there. How you doing? Great, mate. Fantastic. Uh, so, I was listening to <laughs> <Fantastic>. you. Fantastic. <laughs> Bear with me. I finished work and I was in the taxi on the way home and I was listening to um, to another call on the, on the line with you mm. from, uh, was it Saudi Arabia? He said. Uh, um, well, he'd been through Saudi Arabia. He wasn't calling from the... He'd been through Saudi Arabia. So... My my personal issue was that he was he was partly correct, um, and something you touched on was um, the whole job market and how there's not that many people unemployed. But from not long term you know, unemployed. I'm, I mean, a, a healthy economy always needs a certain amount, like three percent, four percent, something like that, unemployed, like a pool of talent to pick from. I'm talking about so long term. It, 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 Long term unemployed. So in the in the UK, if you're talking about four percent unemployed, that's three million people unemployed. Right, yeah, but not long term unemployed. I mean, they they may be but unemployed long, today, long, but they may get a job tomorrow. Unemployed. That's fair enough. But long term or short term unemployed, there's what is it four four to five percent unemployed at, at the current rate at the moment. And if you're talking about the whole of the UK, that's what seventy million people. That's approximately 3.2 million people unemployed. No, but it, but it's not. You know, it, it's the, the percentage of people who are able to able to do people unemployed. Able to do work. You you can't count two year olds or a hundred and two year olds. Yeah, but, but, any, in that, in but that, anyway, in let's, let's not get bogged you're down. Not, you're not count. You're not counting two year olds or three year olds. You're counting people that are of working age and can work. So throwing out that oh, you can't count two year olds or three year olds. Where are you going to put that to? Like 10, 12, 13. All right, well, okay, all right, all right. Let, well, time's so ticking on, so let's not get bogged people. down in statistics. What's your point? The point is, in, so I'm English, and my point is, English people are incredibly entitled, incredibly lazy, and I'm with you on the whole. Uh, well, you compared to things. compared to what? Compared to who? Uh, com compared to Europeans. Compared to people from the continent. Like I have no issue with them 
at all. I think they work a lot harder than English people do. I think they're willing to put up with a lot more than English people do. I'm not sure that's true. There's not enough... Really? Well, well, what evidence do you have of that? Working with people from many nationalities over many years uh, in hospitality. So I'm going on the hospitality industry. Right. Um, Well, well, that's that's a a specific business that, that we don't really like doing. But that doesn't mean to say that we don't work hard no, as a country. No, but it also accounts to over 50% of the workforce in the UK. So uh, you, you mentioned earlier with regards to uh, HGV drivers. It's a specialist um, sort of specialist job. It costs a lot of money to get an HGV licence. Yeah. Why, why is the UK, why are the governments, whoever they are, not offering uh, courses to make the... British people able to do these jobs when we leave. So one of the biggest things for me was my partner earns a lot more money than I do. But she would be better off going on benefits. We've had this discussion. She'd be better off going on benefits instead of going back to work. Now she's had a child because of what's offered. I Well, why, why don't you go on? If, if she earns more than you, well, then surely you would be better off going on benefits. Because I'm not a lazy English person. I want to work. I don't want to have everything handed to me on a plate. No, but you, but that's not the point. You said, were, also, you said single, she would I'm be technically better a single off. Male. So I am not technically better off, but because she has a child, she'll be better off. And that comes down to things with regards to childcare. And you mentioned um, to the other guy that I listened to, how do we change this? How, what's the changes? Well, don't give people money to spend on things that aren't important. So you, you take a percentage of what the benefits are, you say that is solely for things like childcare, so someone can go out and work and or mo- earn more money at a workplace. Yeah, um, that, that doesn't so seem that, like a, a, a sensible solution to make this. Make, why not? To, well, to, to make benefits even more complicated to uh, dole out than they are now. Not really. Yes, really. You give I mean, them, that was the whole point them, of, you give of, them, of uh, universal you give credit them, to make to make like, it more simple. Oh, universal credit made it incredibly more complicated. It was much more simple. I've been on benefits a few times over the years, and universal credit was way more complicated than... Um, okay, than, all right, but to cut to the nub, your, your solution is to um, make people uh, so poor on benefits that they have to do any job that's going just to survive. Any yeah. job that's going with the minimum wage so that they don't survive, so they actually get out to work and they get all those benefits from working instead of right. just but, reaping but in But we, we come back again to, there, there, we don't have a long-term unemployment problem in this country. So you're, you're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. It, it sounds a lot like just lashing out at uh, people below you on the ladder, which is kind of what we specialise in in this country. We like to think that people below us on the ladder are the problem. But the truth is, it's the people above us on the ladder that are pushing us down, not the people below us on the ladder who are pulling us down. Yeah, let's lash out at the poor, because, uh, you know, that'll work. Thanks a lot, Joel. Thanks for your concern. Brentwood. Hello, David. Yeah, hi, Nick. Um, I, I didn't read it about, about Brexit, having listened to the last 20 minutes, but I... I did want to mention that there is a there is a worldwide shortage of, of drivers. I mean, yes. it's not just Brexit. No, that's right. But we are suffering much more than anybody else. Well, I mean, there's four hundred thousand in Europe. In all of Europe, four hundred thousand short. That we are over a hundred thousand in little old Britain, which means that our shortage is double what they're suffering in Europe. Yeah, but I, I think you know this is going to—it's a long-term issue. We haven't been training up drivers, and uh, you know. Uh, anyway, I, I didn't want to bash on about that, but I did want to say that—I mean, the whole idea that you know that Christmas is going to be cancelled because we can't get pigs in blankets. I mean, I, I saw some woman, a pig farmer, saying she was going to she was going to give up because she had a kettle of pigs, and I thought, well. I thought that was the object yeah, of the exercise. I, I, but... Exactly right. But the problem with killing the pigs is that you've got to cut them up once they're killed. And that is a speci- like a very uh, specific and specialised task. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and the people that. that do that, they, they've left along with the drivers. Well, yes. Uh, but, I, you know, I, well, 
I I did support Brexit, and there was there was always going to be adjustment. Nobody uh, pretended. Adjustment. That. Do me a favour. Yeah. Uh, after what period of time do we uh, do we cease well, to be adjusting? You, no, you, yeah, I mean that that was why people voted for Brexit because they they were being you know undercut in salaries. I mean nobody. Well, isn't you know, it people, interesting though? If that's actually the case, then why haven't all of those jobs been uh, immediately taken up? Well, as I say, it, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, does it? I mean, you know, you will these, these wages will rise and people will have to take these jobs. Well, because... people keep saying that as though it can just magically happen that way well, and, and, I, things will, and, that... and things will remain the same. If wages rise, that means the price of the goods will also rise. Not necessarily. Of because course lot, they lot, will. No, no, no. Of course they will. A lot of employers... They who run farms, which are mostly run by city conglomerates, they can, you know, they just have to cut back on their profits. Farmers it? Know, in my make local town, almost but, nothing. It's a desperate <laughs> uh, effort on a daily basis to keep your head above water. I agree, but I, you know, I, I, I see. I talk, you know, they talk about shortages in supermarkets. I, got, I agree that you know you can see the shelves are getting uh, emptier. But I, they still managed to get you know, Polish, Spanish tomatoes, Spanish, uh, you know, there doesn't seem to be a problem in getting anything from Europe. And there never has been in, in, in British supermarkets. You very rarely see British produce. I don't see that Brexit has stopped, you know, European produce reaching uh, British supermarkets. Well, it's, it's uh, weird what is lacking. I mean, um, I, I went to get some porridge and there wasn't there was some porridge but there wasn't the type that i like which is from ireland don't tell me why i oh. like it i just do that's what i'm used to buying and uh, yeah. yes there was none there i went to the spirit section and they didn't have any uh, mexican tequila so the shortages don't seem to make any uh, don't no, seem to make don't. any no, any I, sense I, I, as, as far as I, I, trading with europe is concerned but we don't just trade with europe we get to stuff from uh, here there and everywhere baby well exactly and i just think, i just think that the whole brexit pandemic thing has been combined the people who want to blame brexit will blame brexit and I think it's a combination of both. But I mean, going back to Christmas, I just think, you know, the idea that we're not going to get Christmas is just, you know, it's a way with the fairies, isn't it? I mean, but what, you know, why, why do you, I mean, uh, Christmas, wait a minute, Chris, wait a minute, Christmas will come at the uh, specified time. But if you don't have a tree, which is what they've been saying, if you don't have a turkey, they've been saying that too. If you don't have um, your pork um, nibbles, and you've got no, and you got no toys that the kids wanted. Then what? You, you, you don't seriously believe that. I know you don't because you're too intelligent. If I it, had I mean. told you a month ago, David, that people would be queuing and fighting with knives on petrol forecourts, then you wouldn't have believed me, would you? Well, no, because I, the British people have changed. They're not the British people that I know. I mean, I'm old. old. I'm long enough in the tooth to know that. Are you kidding me? Our, our entire <laughs> history is one of extreme aggression. That's what we do for a living. Well, I, I, I'm old enough to remember the 70s, you know, um, in, you know, when rubbish is piled in, and people talk about right. as if, oh, you know, it was it was worse now than it was then. I mean, I remember going to Leicester Square when the whole place was a rubbish dump. Yeah. I mean, it was I, just piled high. And I, exactly. Right. I mean, yeah. Nobody has a clue what it was like. He, he didn't experience it. I mean, they've no idea. And inflation and everything else. I mean, you know, this is a cakewalk compared to the 70s. Let's well, just wait. I mean, inflation has only just well, started to tick up. And, and once the wages well, start to go through the roof, then yeah, the inflation gonna, inflation will, gonna, will well, increase accordingly because someone's got to pay for it. Yeah, we we need inflation. We need some inflation on wages. Now, you know, people say, "Oh, wage inflation is bad." Well, I'm sorry, it's not for the people who, you know, haven't had a decent wage rise, is it? Anyway, I just think Christmas. You know, people don't. You know, I, I eat turkey, but it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me if I didn't eat turkey this year. I'd have something else. I mean, it's well, just well, like like that. what fish. Well, but yeah, people <laughs> people eat all sorts of things at Christmas: now. salmon. Beef, pork, you know, yeah, but you it? know as well as I do that people start planning this kind of thing for about a month ahead of time and they want their pudding and they want their um, gravy yeah. and they want their sprouts and their parsnips and their turkey yeah. and their roasties I, and all the rest of it. 
Oh, but I, I thought, I, I guarantee they will get them. I, I just don't, I mean... That's a ridiculous that, thing to say. You it. can't possibly guarantee anything of the sort. What you mean is you think, but then I refer you back to my comments some moments ago, that if I told you a month ago that people would be queuing for five hours to get petrol, then you would have told me I was off my head. Well, look around. Dave, I've got to go. But I, uh, I, I appreciate your uh, your belief. He he believes. <laughs> He's clicking the heels of his glittery shoes together as we speak. First, I have to take this call in Wolverhampton. Hello, Neil. Hello there. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh, um, do you know what I'm actually quite pleased as a shortage of drivers? It's because they actually appreciate us now. For 33 years, I've been driving, and and you know, and we've had foreign drivers in. And so what happens is it cascades and say, oh, that's all right, I can only pay them £14 an hour. We can pay them £10 an hour because you're doing it for foreign drivers. Yeah. And now there's no shortage of drivers. Oh, they want to pay us more money. But they don't. If you go into the, if you just tap in on, 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 on any job site there and see, and they still want to pay £10 an hour, £9 an hour to get away with it. I thought, so, that yes. the, I thought the drivers now were being offered uh, £5,000 golden hellos and £10,000 golden uh, hellos and um, well, all, well, all the rest of it. Never, never mind about the bye-byes. Bye-bye. It's the golden hellos. Yes, well, if, if it's out there, yes. <laughs> no, not really, no. And can I say to you... About well, when it, and hang on a minute. I mean, I've read so many stories about drivers are now being offered £50,000 a year and £60,000 a year. Are you telling me it's not true? No, because well, I've got drivers who are here who want to do tonker drivers, but they don't want to take them. I've got HGV1 drivers and seven half tone drivers that want to become like um, the tanker drivers. No, they, they're not interested, to tell you the truth. So it's not out there. So, and oh yeah, by the way, um, about the parcel between 11 to 3, what about the people that actually ordered 24 hours and paid the extra fiver and you knock on their door and they're not in? So why do they pay for 24 hours? <laughs> Come on. There, there you go. Morons. See, both ways. We're surrounded anyway, no, by the, morons. No, but but the thing is, at the end of the day, is that it, it is now years, whole years, I've been working long hours, mm. unsociable hours, mm -hmm. and it's not about the money; it's about quality of life, and they've never got it. And all of a sudden, now we're in the. I don't want to support, um, clap on a Thursday or pot some pans. Just recognise us, you know. It gives us a decent wage, and that's all it is about. And now we're recognised that oh, we haven't got enough drivers. No, the EU can't cope, so our. If they can't cope, how are we going to cope? Well, we're, they're coping a lot better than we are. Well, if they are, that's a, that's a, that's their problem. But we got a problem over here, and we haven't got enough HGUE drivers. Right. So, all the people out there, start putting your hands in your pocket and give us a bit of a, more of a decent wage, some some good hours, and not working all that. What, what's the point of government putting up the hour, the driving hours? That, the, who does that benefit? Does that benefit the drivers or does that benefit the companies? The government no, is running don't. around like a headless chicken. They have got no idea what to do from one minute to, to the next. They just keep throwing these uh, ideas out and um, let, let's see if this one sticks. And if, if that doesn't work, well, here, here's another one. And I mean, it's, it's just like they're rummaging around in the in the box of desperation for their next idea. That's right. So what's going to be, oh, we'll be doing 20 hours a day. No, yeah. it's not. It's not about that. It's not about them. It's about quality of life and drivers working late, lights and everything. And, and they're parked up and things like that. They don't see their families. They don't see it. And, it, and that's what it's all about. It's about quality of life. And, and drivers today don't get it. Yeah. And now and we're going to be standing up. We'll be pots and pans on a Wednesday yeah. banging for, for drivers. Right. OK, um, well, that, that should be our new uh, national slogan. Banging for drivers. Thanks a lot, Neil. Um, Cambridge, Argon. Nick, hey. Hey. How are you? Great, mate. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I think we're going to have to grow our own food for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit too late now. Unfortunately, if you plant it now, we'll not be ready by December. That's true. But maybe it'll have to be half ready. You know, it might be the best that we have to do. Yeah, we're doing our best. Yeah, but at least there'll be less meat, more vegetarian, so that'll be better for the environment. Well, it'll be less food. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but like like you say, Chris Thunberg will thank us for it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. well, we all need to lose a, a, a couple of three pounds. Yeah. I mean, just think about a salad once in a while for crying out loud. Yeah, exactly, but I can't have that for a lunch. I mean, a salad for a lunch is just awful. Well, when, when, would, you, when would you have a salad? 
with with my lunch. Oh, with your lunch. Exactly. Right, yeah. a side dish. A side dish, yes. Right. Well, well, what's the main course then for lunch? Uh, well, it depends. Um, a lasagna, maybe, for but, lunch? but not like. Possibly, yeah, but well, a veggie lasagna. Well, what do you have for dinner? Like a whole cow? <laughs> no, like a, a whole chicken. <laughs> <laughs> a whole chicken? What, all of it? You just pop it in it in your mouth like a lollipop and suck the meat right off it? Well, no, you could cut it up into big bits. Oh, you know, that makes more pieces. sense. Yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A whole chicken. <laughs> yeah, a whole chicken would be, <laughs> it'd be a bit difficult to eat all in one go. Right. Yeah. Well, you, like small mouthfuls, and you'll be able to get through it. Exactly. In, what, like three, Although, four, four minutes. That's true. But I don't know about you, Nick. You, you might be able to do it. Uh, well, that's a very personal question, Argan. <laughs> has absolutely nothing to do with you. But thanks for the call, Beaconsfield. Hello, Darren. <laughs> Hello, mate. Um, yeah, so I was just calling. I was talking to your producer. I was um, actually I was canvassing with uh, back in the Jeremy Corbyn campaign. I, I did a, a stint of canvassing alongside Keir Starmer in Acton uh, years ago, and, and it, he was a lovely bloke. He was so down to earth, and I feel like he kind of just like lost the plot, and he got a bit kind of like Hollywood eyes or something like that. Hollywood and eyes. He just, he, what, what do you mean? Well, I don't know. He's, he's, he's a, bit, a bit too kind of plastic these days. He's, it's like he's trying to do the whole kind of like, you know, being like a, a, a much more generic archetypal leader. But like, he, he's just, he was much more kind of, I don't know, relatable when I when I met him. And the thing is, but what, is, what is that is that because? This, but is that because you were actually talking to him face to face rather than seeing him on TV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That of course that's going to be in there for sure. But you know what, I, I've been thinking, because I've been on a few of these campaigns now, and what I was found like really interesting was in the mayoral election, was that there was, you know, a couple of young guys who were, who were just kind of Instagram celebrities or something, and then they did really well in the, in the mayoral election. And I think, like, you know, what's happened in America with, like, Donald Trump, and I think, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson or something is, like, um, is going up for presidency or whatever, like, <laughs> you know, he's, like, celebrities and all this kind of stuff. I think we're missing a trick in this country, honestly. I feel like what these people understand, that Starmer and Johnson and all these people don't, is the power of mythology, mate, right? So, like, they, they, they know how to capture people who go and watch Marvel films and go and watch Lord of the Rings and all that because they're trying to sell them a mythology. And we're not getting that in this country, and I'm not saying that's, that's a good thing, but I just would reduce it down to just, oh, you know, in the entertainment world now. I think these guys are onto something, do you know what I mean? You think Americans are onto something by having uh, actors uh, be become uh, president? Well, they're capturing people's imaginations. I don't know. Like, I just, I mean, it just always strikes me. Like, who, who can we get for prime minister now? Like, you know, we talk about Starmer and Johnson all this lot. Mm. I mean, who? What? Craig David? I mean, I, I'd vote for Craig David if he ran for prime minister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Darren. Uh, Keir Starmer or Craig David? Discuss. I I'm going to go with Keir Starmer. Hey, Keir. You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. It's true. Oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but uh, I agree with Donald Trump. Thanks a lot, Darren, for whatever that was. Wembley. Hello, Linda. Hello. Linda. Common sense. The government hasn't got any common sense. No. There's if nothing. they were negotiating Brexit, right, they should have thought, well, we're going to need certain people until we train our, our own lorry drivers, for example. Yeah. So they should have said, OK, as part of Brexit, workers that we need, we will give them a visa to come and work here. Unfortunately, Linda, that's not what uh, won Brexit. What won Brexit was promising well, people fewer foreigners. I think that would. I think people would have seen the common sense. In no, that. there was nothing. As you said, there's nothing. There's no common oh. sense. There's no nothing common about sense. The oh. reason they won mm. Brexit, mm. and the reason that the Conservative Party won the last general election, mm. was because they promised people fewer foreigners. Well, the that, end. It, it was about controlling. No, it wasn't. All that's nonsense. It, it's just okay. buzzwords. Ask people who say that kind of thing what that mm. means, more control, sovereignty. Okay. It doesn't mean anything at all. They're just words that they repeat um, ad infinitum, and it's utterly mm. meaningless. The it of it is 
we promise you fewer foreigners. They couldn't say, we promise you fewer foreigners, mm. but uh, for a while we're going to need a lot of foreigners, uh, so maybe it'll be a little bit later on. No, that, that's, a, that's a confusing message. Just tell them, from day one, we will push foreigners back out to sea, vote for us, that's why they're in power. Well, I, I would have seen the sense in it, and and not only that, they're still messed up because they're offering the, these lorry drivers um, visas until Christmas. But mm. I don't think it's going to make be worthwhile just to come until Christmas. Basically. Why? Why would uh, anybody come back to a country yeah. that has been yelling at them to go back to where you came from for the last five years to help us out? Mm, rather well, than stay where they are, earning good money under better conditions, laughing at us. Do they earn better money there, though? Where uh, they are. Where they are, in uh, yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about that, but I, I do know that they have better uh, working conditions. They, they don't have to um, s sleep in uh, lay-bys and uh, wash in a sink and eat a varied diet of crisps that they found in the garage shop all day long for breakfast, lunch and dinner. That I do know. Whiteleaf, Philip. Good evening, Nick. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks. Well, to me, the, the best thing that came out of Brexit is not being handed down laws from unelected officials like Michel Barnier, who now wants to be president of France and wants to stop uh, Im immigration from outside the EU for five years, and he wants the French courts to take over making laws, you know, and... Over, over Europe, you know, not, you know, he wants to be where we are now. No, he doesn't. Well... Nobody on Earth on... wants to be where we are now. <laughs> I absolutely think so, mate. Well, you know, why, I do why, think why, so, Why would you mate. want to stop immigration? He believes in free, they believe in free movement of people. What, why stop immigration? Who, what, eh, what? Well, Michel Barney, he wants to stop non-EU immigration... For five years. Why are you going so, on about Michel Barnier? What's he got to do well, with the benefit of us leaving the, the European he's Union? He's the man who, who espoused the, the wonders of the European Union. No, he was negotiating against our yeah, okay. so uh, he was against evil, the, was he? our dummies in the room on the on behalf of the European Union. What his so he, personal he evil, what he? his personal beliefs are are were irrelevant oh, to the job. Ah, mate. Oh, mate. So he's a lever, is he? He's a what? A leader. He wants to leave the European Union. Philip, his personal beliefs have nothing to do with his job as a negotiator. What? Do you understand that? He oh, he wasn't okay. negotiating oh. for himself. He was negotiating on behalf of the European Union. Why would you be so persistent about backing up and supporting the European Union? Because that was his if, job. If you don't believe those things. It was his job. Um, yeah, he signed up fully member of the EU political... Um, project. Anyway, anyway, mate. No, you know, no. Was, okay, stop calling me mate. Very annoying. I am not your mate. Do you not understand the concept of somebody doing something like, like a columnist, for instance, in a newspaper? You read columnists in newspapers all the time. They don't actually believe the stuff that they come out with. They're writing a column that the editor told them to. The editor will come and say, why don't you write a column about, um, oh, I don't know, Prince Harry and how he's an absolute disgrace. And so they'll, they'll do that. And then the next week they'll say, uh, write a column about uh, what a hero Prince Harry is. And so they'll do that. They don't believe a word of what they write. Look at lawyers. Lawyers make a living out of defending people that they know are guilty. It's not a personal thing. It's their job. Do you not understand that about Michel Barnier? He wasn't doing it for himself. It was his job. He doesn't believe in what he's saying. Did you hear a word of what I just said? So Michel Barnier doesn't believe in what he's saying. He was... Gieber Hofstadt doesn't believe in what he was saying. Donald Tusk doesn't believe in what he's saying. I Phil, mean, I, Phil, I think there may be something wrong with you. I, I, I'm not entirely sure what it might be, but... Like a, I, I, you're beyond um, my ability to help you in the brief period that I've got on the air here. Just know that almost everything that you believe is wrong. And uh, Don't make me repeat what I just said about lawyers and uh, colonists and uh, Michel Barnier doing a job. It was his job. He wasn't making it up as he went along. He had instructions. 
<laughs> I restate my case. Can anybody think of a single thing? He, he couldn't think of anything that was uh, positive about leaving the European Union. He just kept on going on about Michel Barnier. Like, that has anything to do with it. Can anybody think of a single thing, one positive thing, that is identifiable and concrete? Not, not some airy notion that, oh, we're, we're free or um, uh, we're um, out from under the evil influence of our European socialist overlords. You know, just something actual and definite and tangible. Because uh, uh, so far I've had, um, oh, well, they used to pick on us, which is pretty much the, the, the arguments that I've had so far. I, I'll sum them up in that way. Oh, they used to be so mean. <laughs> I've got a list as long as my arm about the negatives. You've seen the negatives. They're on the news every day. Whether the news organisations actually can bring themselves to say the word Brexit uh, in, um, con in, in the context of the problems that they're describing is irrelevant to the truth of it. They are either all, all directly caused by or at least exacerbated by Brexit. All of them. Every, everything that we're facing today. Everything that's been in the news for the past 10 days or two weeks. All of it. Other countries are looking at us and thinking, wow, well, I don't like saying I told you so, but I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. I'm just looking for one positive. There isn't any. I mean, I've been asking for two and a half hours now. Not one single person has called in with anything that is uh, even remotely sensible. I've had the the, the pint, the uh, the crown symbol on a pint glass, and um, I don't know what that last guy was really talking about. Michel, he just kept going on about Michel Barnier. Like that has anything to do with us? What's that got to do with us? Talking about us leaving, having left positives there must be something i mean you think there'd be something you think there'd be people actually uh, the, the the phone lines here would be exploding with people telling me how great it is because they still believe we've still got 43 percent of the population who believe with every fiber of their being that we're doing the right thing that it has been a fantastic um step of you know away from um uh, the uh, the yoke of the evil eu but what do you actually see that has been positive? Anything, just anything I'm looking for. Anything that's not just a symbol. Like, oh, we got our uh, blue passports back. Well, we could have had those when we were in the EU. Just one single thing. Please, I'm begging you, put me out of my mystery. Watford, hello, Arif. Hi there, this is First Time Caller. Thank you very much for taking my call. Thank you for making your call. Lovely. Right. I would like to give my input on the labor crisis we were discussing earlier. Right. right. I don't really don't know where to start from because there is so much going on in my head. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm running two small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Been in the UK for 17 years, right? Uh, born and brought up in Saudi Arabia, lived few years in Pakistan, then came here. So I have observed three different countries, different culture, different you know infrastructures and blah, blah, blah. Based, based on that, I have a little bit of experience, I would say. Not that I'm trying to be patronizing, saying that I know more than anyone else or not. Okay. From day one, I landed in this country. I have felt that there has been a labor crisis here. It's a little bit unfair to you know, just blame Brexit for all of it. Brexit, you can say, was the last nail on the coffin, right? But this labor crisis problem in this country has been there for a long, long time, and it was only getting worse day after day. But day what, after what, day, what, day what, after do, what do you define as a labor crisis? My friend, there are people out there, but they are not willing to work, right? Mm, Apparently, people I don't, are losing I, jobs. I don't think that that's true. I, 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 they they want to work, but they, they just want the right kind of work. They, they don't want to bend over in a field and yank turnips out of the ground all day. Who does? Y yes, yes, agree with that. And uh, yes, I agree with that. And th this is exactly what you were discussing with this guy, I think, half an hour ago. And that really made me make this call. 
you were uh, the guy you know were saying that you know if you're paying them right they will do the job i totally disagree with that there are, there are so many people out here even if you pay them 20 pound an hour mm. they're not going to work because part of the problem which i explained to your colleague when she answered the phone part of the problem is the benefit system people okay now the benefit system it's very good it's designed to help the needy people but there are so many loopholes and it's the system is so lenient that it's been exploited by the people and they are better off staying at home my friend in Arif, one Arif, year Arif, Arif, I, I just don't buy that i mean what evidence do you have that people are living a life of luxury putting their feet up and smoking a cigar by not working do me a favor my friend in Stop one year calling me I, your friend okay big I have interviewed 300 people in one year. Yeah. Literally 300 people. To do what? Right? To do what? Uh, I have a leaflet distribution business. Right? We are one of the biggest com we were one of the biggest companies in Watford. Mm -hmm. Now the business is up there for sale. Yeah. Just because of the shortage of people. Uh, okay, the so people. you you interviewed 300 people and they didn't yeah. and, and most of them didn't take your job. Two shifts? Three shifts? And then they say that, oh, is there any possibility you can pay cash in hand? And I was, why would you need cash in hand? Oh, you know what? I have reasons and blah and blah. Okay, and blah. You know that, what? that's not that's not three hundred people said that. A, a few people my, might have said that. A few people are yeah. always uh, on the take, regardless of how much they earn an hour or what their position in society is. Yeah, yeah, my friend. Uh, oh, sorry, Nick. Sorry, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. you know what, like I said, there's so much going on in my head. I don't yeah. know what to say. Anyways, Nick, yes, I agree with you. I'm not saying everyone is doing that. But, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are better off staying at home. I'm not no, saying I this I is the main reason. I'm not saying this is not that. I just don't believe you. That's an assertion that you're making. You're not basing it on any evidence. The only evidence that you have is that you've employed mm -hmm. or you tried to employ people to do a certain kind of job, which I imagine yeah. didn't pay very much, and they didn't want to do it. Now, you don't know if mm -hmm. they then left your place and went to do another job that was better for yeah. them and better paid. Mm -hmm. You assume that because they didn't want to do your job that they then mm -hmm. left to do nothing. Uh, some of them have done the same thing every now and then I meet them here and there and they say okay I would like to do two more days you know but they never turn up on the work I'm not saying all of the people are doing this because of the benefit system but like I said at the beginning part of the reason is this secondly people are so much choosy nowadays so much choosy they you know uh, they keep on switching the jobs from one place to another from one place to another, from there to... Yeah, I have because, because, it's, because it's what suits them. I mean, you said that you came here through Saudi Arabia. You can't yeah, tell me yeah. that the citizens mm -hmm. of Saudi Arabia are doing the yeah. menial jobs. They don't. Yeah, not, they employ people from other countries to do those yeah. jobs for them. They're just like exactly. us because they're too yeah. rich and they're too fat and they're too yeah. comfortable to do those totally to do those uh, vital jobs that don't pay much that make a country go round. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Although you haven't agreed with the points I have made, but that's not it's, it's not a battle between you and me. It's just a <laughs> yeah, it's, talk it's not a contest. You know, the, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> w what you have just said leads me to another suggestion. I sometime I just wish I could knock on number 10 Downing Street and say that I have a suggestion. Just listen to me. If you don't like it, discard it. But it's just a small, uh, you know, suggestion. Yeah. But Saudis, doesn't matter how they are, let's not discuss about the human rights and all that over there. Saudi Arabia, Dubai, all these countries, right? It, in fact, not just Middle East. Let's right, talk no, about no, no, Australia. Okay, 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 right, back off that. Okay, okay. I, I want to hear yeah. your suggestion. Okay. What's your suggestion? Okay, okay. right. So all the employers, they have their representatives in different, let's say, boroughs and, you know, whatever, whichever way the system works over there, right? So the employers, they will give the list of the people they're short of. 
for example, I'm running, uh, let's say, uh, a soft drinks business, right? Yeah. I need uh, a forklift driver, right? right. I, um, okay, uh, I need someone who should know how to use that specific machine which uh, wraps the drinks, right? Yeah. Okay. But what so do you what do? What do, what do you is, what What do you do with the list? Uh, okay, you provide the list to your representative of that area, right? Now that representative passes on that list to the government. Let's say Saudi government, right? Now Saudi government advertises it worldwide. Now it could be someone from Philippines, it yeah. could be someone from yeah. Pakistan. Can I, can I stop you there, Arif? The government is ideologically opposed because they think their fans want it this way, that, that, that no foreigners will set foot on this country. Sorry, can you rephrase that? Sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> if you, well, I'll try briefly because I'm, I'm, I'm right up against the news. But there's no point in advertising um, menial jobs internationally. That, that's the reason that we're in this place in, uh, to begin with. It's because people thought that, oh, they're coming over here and they're taking our jobs and blah, 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 blah. The government is not going to do anything about it if it involves bringing people from other countries to this country to fix the problem because that's the reason that they're in power is because they offered the opposite of that to say goodbye to all of those people that were doing the jobs that made this country go round because we thought we'd be better off when they left comes to find out the opposite's true but anyway um i appreciate the call there uh, my friend thanks for that Arif. rushton colin hello colin I'm quite surprised that the media aren't getting hold of us because the fact is an HCV driver cannot turn up at a petrol station with a tank of fuel. They're a very specialised trade. They need a licence to do it. All, all, all I'm hearing is, oh, we've got no HCV drivers, no fuel. That's nothing to do with the fuel shortage. The fuel shortage is down to idiots who think, I'm going to go and fill my car up because the media banged on about BP having 45 stations shut. And it's ridiculous. You people should be telling people there is no shortage, but you bang on and on and on about there's a shortage. Colin, I passed I pass nine stations on them the way in. And, yeah, why? Uh, because I, you lot haven't said, you lot have reported false news. No, it's not, fal it's, it's not false news. If you cannot get petrol, there is a petrol shortage. I know enough petrol exists, it's just not in the right place. Hang on, Nick, why would you put it down to the Tory government? What, would you prefer me to put do? it down to the Labour government? We're, right, we're, we're 100,000 lorry drivers short. Yes. Those 100,000 lorry drivers can't deliver and dispose of petrol in petrol stations. No, but, but in, in, of course it is. In among those hundred, of course, hun no, of they, they course it is. Wait a minute. In, in among those hundred thousand that we are short of, there are specialists who do this who do this work. No, you're right. You're, you're completely a hundred. I I had a conversation with a company in Kettering yesterday, who are lorry uh, haulage company. It's got nothing to do with that. This is an absolute farce. They're telling me. Haulage company, and they're going to be starting me in a job in about a week, two weeks. It's a joke. A, a haulage company told you that the lack of drivers that we have in this country has nothing to do with Brexit? No. They told me the petrol shortage has nothing to do with hmm. this. It's a, they said to me it's an absolute farce, and the media play it, and all, all the British people have done is said, oh, hang on, I ain't going to get to work on Monday. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go sit in a petrol station queue for an hour. Yeah, it's well, if, if, they, if they can't get to work on Monday, then it's not an ir irrational thing to do, is it? I mean, you, ca you can't get around it. it. It might have been an irrational response at first, but once you see um, petrol stations run out, and the next one's run out, and the one after that's run out, and the one after that's got a hundred cars queuing to get in, well, then we've got a problem. Then it's not an irrational thing to want to fill your car up, because you have no idea when this problem is going to be solved. I mean, it could be solved next week. Might not be. Might be two weeks. Might be a month. We've got no idea. There's, there's absolutely no uh, reason to, um, to uh, suspect the best. Uh, let's have a call in um, St. Ives. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Nick. Brenda. Nick. Brenda. 
I cannot believe I've just heard that on the news a warning's been put out that there will be no pigs in blankets. No pigs in blankets. Warning, warning. And yes. Nick, you won't be able to have your cuddly teddy bear. And Nick, you won't be able to have a pumpkin at Halloween. <gasps> no. I mean, what a disaster. It's worse than that, though, Brenda, because what was f what the news reader failed to mention was that we might not have any fireworks on Guy Fawkes night. <laughs> Hooray. Huh? <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Not a fan of fireworks, then? No, I, I am, yeah, I am, yeah. Right. And you won't be able to have, would have a Christmas tree, either. Oh, that's but, right, yeah. But, but on a more serious note, mm. Brexit has not caused the catastrophe in all our government departments, the justice system, the Home Office, the Foreign Office, mm. the NHS. Yeah. They're all crumbling like there's no time left to crumble they are on their knees and the police it's almost as though if you elect a clown you get a circus well, here we go 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 okay Nick, who could have predicted take, that why has it taken so long to get this the army out to deliver this fuel i think it was all planned the price has got up at the at the petrol pumps so we're putting profit into the the big um, petrol companies and then you've got people saying you know i agree that you know um wage rises should go up but because all these big corporations are sub we're subsidizing these big corporations by the low wages they pay then they go on universal credit and they go on tax credits so the taxpayer in the end pays yeah. for, the, for this so the corporations and i believe that this government wants to virtually crucify the economy, all small businesses, um, and the corporations will just uh, rule the roost. That's how I see it. Yeah, the, right, yeah, under this scenario, then the, all small businesses will become economically unviable, and mm. large mm. multinational corporations will just sweep in, pick yep. up a lot of them for a song, and um, we'll be left with like three companies that, <laughs> that make everything. But we're going to be run by these big corporations, these oligarchs, these bankers, these all the rich. We're going to be controlled by these huge global corporations. It's it's evident, and I just think this this government is hell bent on bringing this economy back down again. I mean, the fuel disaster was like a fuel like a lockdown virtually people didn't get to work teachers nurses hospitality care workers it was almost like a semi-lockdown and i just think it's all been planned because it's preparing us for another lockdown i think and how is it that for the last three weeks we've heard nothing about covid the infection rates mm. have been up in the 36,000. I think there's 32,000 a day. Well, it's, but we've heard absolutely nothing. Well, so I don't. I don't think that that's necessarily a, a government plot. I think that it's more that the, the the news cycle has moved on a bit. There's nothing really major to report at the moment. Um, so we're just, you know, the news that new is the most important part of the word news. Well, like pigs in blankets. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. They will concentrate on that now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've got to go. Thanks a lot, Brenda. Uh, great Yarmouth. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Um, I've yeah been listening to a lot of um, a lot of uh, comments in, in regards to Brexit. So um, I think, like for me, I'm a 30 year old male that didn't have the opportunity to uh, vote whether we joined or left during uh, 45 years of uh, being part of the EU. So. Um, I relished in the opportunity to uh, vote at the time. Um, Relish. Listen to a lot. Yeah, listen to a lot of uh, arguments for remain and leave, and you know I've come back and we're still having the same arguments and same debate after voting nearly out for five years now. But I think for me, probably like probably one of the benefits is that holding the government to more accountability and really having checks on food coming into the country like i, I wait, remember wait, when wait, um, wait 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 checks yeah. on food coming into the country yeah. well we didn't have that before yeah. no we didn't not when we were part of the eu but <laughs> you know we we yeah, didn't you know, have got, checks no. on food when we were part of no, the eu no there wasn't no border between um you know the uk or europe there, there wasn't no such 
checks in there, you know, Poland yes. can send their chickens over to us for, you know, lies. that's the whole point of being part of the single market. Yeah, but there were so, um, there were standards that all of the countries had to adhere to. So the checks They weren't always met. I I only watched a, a news thing on ITV the other night about how some uh, dodgy chicken meat come through from Poland when we were part members of well, the we EU used to sell uh, horse meat as we used to sell horse meat as beef. That had nothing to do with we, the EU. I don't think we did personally, but I think we probably bought the meat that was probably from the EU country that was horse meat, but we it wasn't our horses in the meat. How do you know that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, can, I can assure you that they I wouldn't be British. They all spoke British with a foreign accent. Do. Yeah, sure they did. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, like, for me, like, just, yeah, having, like, a bit of independence, like, I, I moved Are to you Australia, kidding me, like, you Matthew? Know, independence. What, uh, independence. Outside, what, what does that mean? Be... Independence. Independence. Desc describe the independence that we have think, now that we didn't have I think have having there. the ability to hold our MPs um, to account a little bit better. In I've what manner have we been able to, to hold Boris end. Johnson and this cast of clowns to account? Tell me well, how we would do that. Can, I'm sure on a daily basis you can go and contact your MP and you can take a f numerous amounts of issues to them and they'll yeah, take and it to You know how much they. attention they would pay to that? I mean, if you call, if you were in Boris Johnson's constituency and you complained about any and everything that he's doing, you know how much attention he would be... You know how much time he would give you? He wouldn't even show up. He, he probably couldn't find Uxbridge with a sat-nav. Are you kidding <laughs> me? He probably couldn't, no, but he's a career politician, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. Like in, a nut he, in, he, in a nutshell, he's that's that's exactly <laughs> right. He is a politician. In well, he's a showman, and that's that's the extent of his ability to do the politics part, to get on stage and get an audience laughing and Pah! you know pretend to be Churchill and all that. When it comes to doing that bit, he's very good. When it comes to doing the actual job that he was um, applying for, hopeless. He's great in the application, in the actual job part, not a clue. And there's zero chance of holding him to account. Battersea, Jake. Jake. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, Nick, how are you? Good, thanks. Good, I haven't, I haven't listened to you for a long time, and I heard you in Milan. I, I used to listen to you before 2016. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but then you went all anti-Brexit. Uh, and I'm afraid I'm a great Brexiter. You're a, uh, you're a great Brexiter? I'm, I'm very, very fond of it. And, and you're, you're, which, which bit are you most fond of? I'm very, very fond of having cut away from the EU being up to but that, that's just uh, the idea I, of Brexit which which bit of uh, what's um, come to pass I, since then are you most fond I, of I must say I'm not a huge fan of the vaccine rollout but that, that, is that often has nothing used, to do with that Brexit is often, though. that is often used as an example but, of it, how but it's nothing to do with Brexit but, the Brexit but, but, vaccine okay. rollout so what is it since we've Certainly left more, the European more Union more Sit white forging forging a relationship with Australia and, and America. <laughs> building, building those uh, now, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa. Are, you, are you saying that we didn't used to trade much with America? Uh, we uh, used to trade a great deal. We have always traded a great deal, and we will yeah. continue to trade, uh, trade right. so, a great so deal. Right, so there's no, I, there's no the difference free there, free then. Free trade agreements are noise. They're, they're of no benefit to anyone, really. A free trade agreement is of no benefit to anyone. Is that, is that your a, is that your position? No, it's not actually. Having having just taken uh, no, that isn't quite my position. But I I just think that Brexit is going to work. Jake, you I can't come up with a single thing that's that you that even but, 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 a great Brexiter such I, as yourself. I'm, I'm you can't down, think I'm of down, one I'm single down, positive thing that's happened so far, can you? Around the coasts of Devon, where we're not getting those bloody great trawlers sucking the ocean dry. Yeah, there are some good things. We're going, we're growing kelp down there. We're we're we have we're great growing kelp. Are you kidding me? Okay. What kelp did not grow in water previous to us leaving the European Union? What? I'm just curious. Is this a, a, a parody vast, call? Vast, uh, look, I, this isn't a parody call. Of course, it isn't a parody call. I know. But, uh, we can look one Jake, way. Or what, what do you what do you do My, for a, what do you do for a living, Jake? Please don't say teacher. <laughs> I'm a plumber. <laughs> I mean,
going to go ahead and not believe you. <laughs> Just based on the accent. That's all. I've never known a plumber to speak like you. I mean, it does sound as, you, as though you have plums in your mouth, but that's different. Ealing. Hello, Jennifer. Good evening. Um, my take on this is um, we've read in the paper, we've heard it on your program on the television, that the DVLA is thousands and thousands of licenses, renewable licenses, behind. Mm. Now, no one is addressing this. And a load of these must be HGV drivers. Mm -hmm. Now, why, if the country is back up and running, as we were told it is, why are these DVLA people not back at work? And I, I, my take on this is because they have a union behind them, the same as the NHS, the same as the education system, um, whereby the hospitals aren't up and running, the doctors aren't up and running, the schools keep putting up a spanner in the works. And the, the union is trying to, is running the country and trying to bring the country to its knees by stopping all these people from doing a job they're being paid to do. Also, there's probably a lot of um, HGV drivers perhaps still on furlough till the end of September. I don't know if, if they've been given furlough money or, or not. But... If the, we can go abroad to go and get these um, HGV drivers, why can't we tell the DVLA, if you're not going to go back at work, then you'll have no job to go to, and we'll bring other people in who can do your job and get the country back on its feet. And, well, but well, why but, can't we do that? Because they've got a big union behind them. Well, I don't think there's any evidence that I've seen or heard that, uh, that indicates that um, DVLA is not at work. Be, well, they it's say it's just an assumption. Oh, there's been work. numerous, I've read lots and lots of uh, letters in the paper where they say they're waiting months. Yeah, there's a months. backlog. Yeah. So, so w what is the reason for that? If it's well, all we, we just gone through, we just like gone through a pan we just gone through a pandemic, Jennifer. I mean, well, I all, 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 all sorts of businesses have been uh, upended. We, other people have managed to keep working, haven't they? Well, you've you just given us a you just given us a massive list of uh, of those occupations that haven't managed to uh, keep working as normal. They, they want to put every every obstacle in the way so they don't have to go back to work because it. But, it but you, the there is no down. there is no evidence that they are not going back to work or have not been at work. I mean, the, the whole of, the whole of society and the home. economy has been turned upside down like a tossed salad, Jennifer. So, but it's the it's the unions and the workers' fault who are trying to bring down the country for, for what for what How reason? Come that, uh, two or three weeks ago, we didn't have this problem with the, with the drivers, but now all of a sudden we have. That's a completely all untrue. The pandemic, That's we had all to our food delivered. Totally untrue, Jennifer. We've had the problems with the drivers for many many years. They've just become exacerbated after Brexit. But don't keep blaming Brexit on this. There's an awful lot of people in this country who didn't want Brexit to happen. And there's an awful lot of ways of putting a spanner in the works surreptitiously. And that is what's going on now. Because it seems funny that all of a sudden the whole country is imploding. Including the people on the motorway stop it, which is nothing whatsoever to do with climate change. Of course it is. No, it isn't. Well, what is these, it? They, because these people aren't practicing what they're preaching. But they're not interested. In, they're only interested in bringing the country to a standstill and disrupting people's lives. No one. Not but why? Why would they be only interested in that, Je Jennifer? Can I recommend that you stop reading the internet? Just get off Facebook. Stop reading Twitter. Actually, Twitter's probably not at fault here, is it? It's, prob it's probably more Facebook. Long form uh, conspiracy theories. It's not doing you any good, uh, Jennifer. I, I don't think that there is some sort of um, underground plot to bring down the country. It's like the Conservative Party is hitting us in the head with a shovel while saying that our safety is their top priority. Unless I'm getting it wrong, in which case you can correct me. 0345 6060 973. Selby. Paul. <laughs> yes, uh, nice analogy, Nick. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Um... I've got to say, that all this uh, insulation blocking motorways and stuff, um, it's just the whole thing is completely outrageous. And they don't even need to bring in new laws. They've already got laws for these people. And, uh, I mean, <coughs> people go to prison for a contempt of court. 
and at this lot seem to be able to go from one juncture to another and get released the same day and get given a cup of coffee by the old bill and then go back this next day. It's amazing. And, and it's like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, contempt of court, give them six months. I mean, there already is the law there. Give them six, well, not six months, maybe, but give them 30 days in prison just to think about it. Please they won't come and block everybody's life up. You know what I mean? Right. OK, thanks, Paul. Isn't... Let's have a call in uh, Walsall. Hello, Mick. Hi, Mick. How are you? Good, thanks. Spoke to you yesterday, but I thought I'd get it better get this in. The petrol queues, it's happened twice before, under Callaghan and Thatcher. And can you tell me what caused it? Um, well, was it OPEC was the Thatcher one, um, or was it the Callaghan one? It, it happened again, I think, the Tony Blair, didn't Tony Blair suffer uh, petrol queues because there uh, were strikes I don't in... know um, about Tony Blair. Yeah. I know Callaghan, he was a minus. Right. With picket in the uh, refineries, yeah, stopping petrol leaving. Right, I think it was the same thing happened to Blair. Yeah. So that's happened before, and we was in the EU both times. Well, if you say Blair as well, three times. Uh, you, know, you can't blame everything on Brexit. I don't think. So, well, no, you can't blame every, you can't blame everything on that? Brexit. All right, thanks yeah. a lot, mate. St John's Wood, Michael. It's totally unjustified. What sort of fascist world are we living in? You've got to be vaccinated for a vaccine that doesn't even stop you getting the virus. This is so ridiculous. How on earth can anyone who um, is not vaccinated be a threat to someone who is? And Len Goodman's comment that, 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 that everybody should be vaccinated is just an absolute nonsense. We haven't had any yellow uh, data yet about the side effects. Um, there's no reporting on the news about what's happening in Australia, putting fascist stickers on unvaccinated household doors. I mean, that, that's what it's been on LBC, thank, thankfully. But, and, and you're doing your bit um, um, to, to hopefully get some yellow data re released and some truth uh, um, discerned um, um, into this COVID mess. But um, they, they, they can't seem to put the shovel down. They keep digging the hole bigger. The lie becomes more and more hollow. Um, you know, truck drivers, HGV drivers lumped in with tanker drivers. They're two different animals. It's like comparing a greyhound to a horse. A tanker, a tanker driver has to go whoa, through whoa, special whoa, 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 Nelly. Tra training. We're, yeah, we're, we're, not we're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about the well, vaccine. I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, everything is starting to port to, to, to point to different countries clutching other countries' lives that there's a, a truck driver shortage in the EU, right, UK, uh, and the uh, USA, all simultaneously. Okay, again, not the issue in this hour, but um, thanks for that confusing um, missive. Teenmouth, David. Yes, good, good evening. Yes, David. Yeah, yeah I'm a Brexiteer. I've voted Conservative all my life. In my working life as a head of a, head of a FE department, I had... Head of, a, head of a what? A, a, a department within a college of further education. Oh, yeah. And we had extensive links, exchange programs with 10 countries in the common market. So I was, I am fully aware of the advantages, but also the disadvantages of the European dimension. But my concern is, well, not my concern, but the, yes, it is a concern that what we have found is that if, when Boris came in, it was just a single issue that was on. Uh, with perhaps some thought about the uh, global warming, but nobody, but nobody anticipated this uh, vaccine uh, problem, and the and that nobody in the world, no country in the world has got it sorted out. If you, even the wonderful uh, New Zealanders have got problems, my brother-in-law in Melbourne in Australia, it place is totally closed down. Israel has hit the fan. French, God only knows what's <laughs> happening there, and everybody has got the same, similar, yeah. different. But what's, different your, what's your point, though, David? Well, I, I, I'm not sure if anybody could have done any better. Oh, my God. Leave him alone. He's doing his best. Are you kidding no, well, me? Every country no, on earth did better than us. And, no, no, and no, you no, just described something that is common to every country. So the difference between they, us and them is no, the thing, that, defi the thing that defines not, modern Britain, which is Brexit. They're not doing any better. But an additional little point that you made is what you said, that one of the problems with the left is that uh, they can't get their act together. Now, if yeah. you've got a group that can't get their act together, how can you then expect them to, to run a country? No, what I'm saying is they can't get their act together to form a coalition. 
Well, yeah, but the coalition, there isn't a coalition. There's huge differences between the Greens and the Labour Party. And well, the of, of course they are. That's because they're different parties. That's not what a, yes, co a coalition is not one party. It's different I, parties, I, I, which I, are I, different actually, because they have differences between them. Yes, but they that's have a to coalition. Have some form of, yeah, of course, I understand that. I'm not uh, totally dim, but if you look <laughs> at the. Uh, fairly dim obviously compared with you but then you are god almighty oh, well that is true yeah i i am god true, almighty yeah. 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 i am god almighty yeah so play the music but he, you know okay, then. when we okay when we had coalition didn't work with the conservatives and the and the lib dems we well, didn't for the lib dems it didn't work well what do and, you mean by and, what do you mean by didn't work well, it didn't work for the Lib Dems because they wiped out in the next election. But we're not you interested know? in whether it works for the individual parties. We're interested in whether it works for the country. Yes, but what... I don't think you can because even within single parties, even within the Labour Party, you have got... And they would be the major uh, shareholder in this coalition. Mm. There is massive differences between them. Well, you know, you know why? You know why, David? Because it's made, oh, up, of, because it's made up of people. People think yes, differently course. from other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you don't think that there's that a, a country could be run successfully with uh, a coalition? <laughs> it's proved to be very difficult. The country with the greatest so, coalition so system... I, I'll, I'll, I'll give difficult. you a short list of countries that are run uh, uh, by coalitions. This is just in Europe. Albania, Armenia, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Iceland, Italy, Kosovo, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Monaco, Montenegro, Netherlands, North Macedonia, Norway, Republic of Ireland, Romania, San Marino, Serbia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Ukraine, and Northern Ireland. Arr, arr, arr. All of those countries are run by coalitions, David. No, they're not. They're not. Aren't they? Okay. <laughs> no, they're not. Priceless. <laughs> if ever you hear anything that disagrees with your fundamental principles, just say no, it's not. That will work. You can you can make something not be a fact if you just refuse to believe it. Wow. And you worked in further education, you say.